we're live. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let me just send these things out and we'll start in a little bit. We get like 10 minutes. I just posted my story. Yes. I'm also going to send the stream to a couple of Discord chats I'm a part of. Okay. Also post. I'm doing like a quick but link. Sure, sure, sure. On uh, the story. Well, we are live. Super excited. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. I've been thinking about this one all day. It's so fun. Yeah, this is really, this is really fun. I'm excited. Can't hear me munching on fries on the other end of the I had I can I'm just kidding, no I can't. Uh, but I had wings up okay, the other good. day. <laughs> you did fantastic. Was, did you get did you uh, usual uh, order? I got lemon pepper tenders and then I got buffalo sauce on the side to dip. Ah uh, uh, yes. It was good. It's very delicious. Okay. I'm ready to go. And it's kind of, I know we're still waiting for people to potentially join. I got two viewers. Yeah, let's, let's get, Welcome let's folks. Give a more minutes. Yeah, sure, sure. We'll welcome, just leave. welcome. So yeah, we'll give you guys about four more minutes. Uh, go and get your art supplies together, whatever mediums you know that you use to be able to make your lovely creations, whether that be your digital software, your uh, you know color pencils, mechanical pencils, any doodles, anything that you want to be able to do. Any, you know, it doesn't even have to be that. It can be it. Get out those crochet needles and start crocheting. Yeah, that'd be kind of that'd be kind of wild, but I'm here for it. The crochet, you know, creature design is amazing. Drew's back. Welcome back, Drew. We're really excited. I'm really excited, at least. It's going to be fun. Just get my my lad, Dino Canis. Di is it Dinani Canis? I thought it was Dinana Canis. Dinana Canis. <laughs> I mean, it's not really. I guess, I guess technically it could be whatever you want it to be, but um, I think it's still a... Uh, I guess we're just mixing both... I got I say that on a can. It's funny. I, it's just funny because this kind of matches up perfectly. Because like I'm actually gonna in my reference. Like I have the one references of the toy on here, but I have my separate reference sheet which has like more inspiration. Um, it like the Dinana Canis toy looks semi aquatic from what I can see. It's got like these webbed hands and like things, fins. Yeah. But the um, comic, but the, the concept art doesn't have that. I know. It's just it's funny. The toy does, but you yeah, know, you know what else has. You know what else has frills like that though is the uh, the Jurassic World Deinonychus. The uh, you mean from Evolution? Yeah. So I have that as a reference too. It's like it's a perfect perfect there match. There you go. You know, so some... All right, all right. That's, that's not what I do too. I'm gonna try to include some. Of it. It's so odd that it's aquatic, but like, go off, sister. Exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. 
You know, it's going to be fun, though, to kind of do. I also have some basilisk lizards and some, like, Indian wolf-dog hybrids that look kind of cool. Yeah. And just, you know, they, they got that kind of sleek, like, wild kind of look, but also that kind of, like, domesticated, like, doughiness in their eyes, you know? Yeah. It's so odd. It's so interesting. Yeah. But anyway, this is going to be kind of a fun little thing to do. All right. So. Oh, no! Okay, hold on. There we go. Hold on a second. I'm going to do one thing real quick, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm also going to show off a little bit of things that we were doing last uh, session. Well, not last session, yesterday, in the little draw session we had. This lad, remember? Yeah, yeah. It was a fun one to do. De definitely show the mesh of it. Because everybody, we, uh, Arj and I will usually hop on, even on non-stream days, and we'll just have, like, drawing sessions because, uh, you know, you, you need those good vibes going yeah. on and help get really, really creative. So, yeah, show what you're working on. Yeah, it was um, one of my spec world projects. I was working on uh, using something called Thompson grids, which is like a technique from the early turn of the century to, like, try to imagine how things evolve in, in principles. So I was just using warp on a skull of Raja, Rajasaurus, you know, a large, uh, I don't say large, well, it's like a yeah, mid-size abelosaurid from like the Indian continent like that you know during the Cretaceous when it was still an island and this fictional landmass I'm working on for one of my spec evo projects is like taking place between a fictional island archipelago a chain between you know uh, India and Australia so I was trying to think of the fauna that would populate that landmass you know mm. so I was just working on you know the idea of like having an abelosaurid kind of take on the niche of like a I would say lo super large, it'd still be pretty small, but like a, you know, mainline kind of carnivore, you know? But I'm saying they weren't, they were already mainline carnivores in their own environments, but I guess you could say something that's adapted more, kind of a tyrannosaurian condition of like bone crushing, you know? This is specifically everybody to a universe that RJ is working on. It's 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 pretty cool. There's some good stuff coming up in the future. This is true. You know, not just one, but twelve. But uh, I won't go into details as of yet. I'm going to be start streaming solo, and in those streams, I'll be kind of working on more world building stuff for that project. Or I should say, it's you know, it's I'll be like this. There there is one project, but there are twelve flavors of that project, and they're all kind of like connected to each other and there's gonna be like a lot of it's a lot of spec evo and spec fiction and sci-fi and fantasy and i just really like you know it just gives me an excuse to draw everything i've ever loved you know yes 100%. okay uh let me just take care of this one thing and i'm gonna start roughing out my my little my little gentleman here okie dokie exciting time everybody we we're actually really we we're really looking forward to, to this one it's gonna be fun all right i'm ready are you ready good sir i am 100 percent ready it's gonna be super okay. exciting i'm gonna start roughing in the shadow silhouettes and i guess we should go into a little bit of our process for those of you who are joining in for the first time you want to take it away this time justin as far as giving us an update on how we usually uh, not update but how we usually been doing things yeah how i started off yeah, so um, usually what we do, everybody, how we start off is, uh, you know, we have our graphics pictures. We start off with our sort of our simplified pipelines, which applies to basically any um, any type of uh, any type of animal, any type of creation. It's just a one of those back to drawing 101 kind of techniques. Um, usually, Ar what Arjun likes to do is he usually goes with a silhouette form, and um, which is a very crucial way because it helps you to be able to understand the muscle mass of a character or the size proportions of a character, things of the sorts like that. And then usually how I do is I start off with primitive shapes in a sort of similar concept where I could actually switch materials to go to check out like outline right here. And I technically start blocking out in sort of the same sense. The only difference is that it just happens to be sort of in 3D. So you will be able to get two different in-depth looks of how we each create um, our own different variations of concept art. Um, whether it be in a 3D medium or in a, a um, two-dimensional medium. So it's it's going to be a really fun time. It's going to be really, really fun. Yeah, I'm really excited. And pretty soon, I think, ooh, you're going to be a cool thing to do at some point, Justin. I know we talked about this, but maybe Switch. Oh, yeah. If I, if you do, uh, I do Photoshop and you try a 3D model. Yes, because I'm learning to 3D myself. I'm still a baby at it, but I'm learning. 
it's it's terrifying, but it's also fun. Yeah. It's it's really different, everybody. It's really cool. I'm not gonna lie, it's really really awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna start with a general kind of shape. And it's funny. I have had, you know, it was an interesting kind of thing because like there were so many ideas of like the the dog raptor concept. You know, mm. you you familiar with the kind of like uh, what I mean by that, right? Like the Indoraptor. Indoraptor, yes, but also even the the V Raptors from King Kong start off as dog yeah. raptors. Yeah, what are those technical? Uh, not the ones that we saw in the two thousand five one, because weren't those. Those weren't raptors. Those were, those were like, well, I guess they technically were supposed to be raptors, weren't they? Yeah, they were. They were evolved from dromaeosaurs. But I'm saying, have you seen the original? So the, the film that Peter Jackson made apparently, apparently oh, wow. was first thought up in the 90s. Okay. It's like this concept art from that film, from like that prototype. Ver he always wanted to do a remake of like the original King Kong. You know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he finally got to do it. He, he pitched the film a long time ago. And it, it just never took off until he finally got a shot to do it, you know, he, uh, I think, you know, in the 2000s, uh, in 2005, I think. But there was concept art that, it, that goes all the way back, and one of the things was the dog, ra was the, the v -rap the original V-Raptor was quadrupedal, and its head shape was taken inspiration from a terrier. Okay, okay. It's like, it still stayed the same. If you see the head shape of the V-Raptor, uh, you know, and the Vastasaur, the... You know, <laughs> the concept art from that movie, that movie, regardless, and that what is it? The book of the world of Kong is just yeah. absolutely phenomenal. It's a lovely book. I really like it. Okay, I'm gonna... I think we've discussed before that we each wanted, we wanted that book. We want, we we're like determined to find ways to get it because I don't think it's it's really. No. I think it's kind of difficult to find still nowadays, isn't it? Or it's it's like you have to order it special mm. because it's out of print. Cool. Uh, okay. That makes Okay, I'm going to be working on this fellow. So everybody, we've been actually talking a lot about um, the, the way we wanted to do this. Uh, we've been talking about it all week. So usually when we announce like what we're going to be working on... Oh, by the way, if you have any ideas of what you would like us to spell next week, um, drop it in the chat. Yes. Uh, we Right now we are currently working on our... Uh, our series, um, basically just regarding of the, the different Chaos Effect animals that came out like in 97, 98, and some of the ones that were not um, that were not released. Uh, so we're, there are some that we're not working on yet, kind of like the um, the Ultima Source is one that we're not working on yet, because that's kind of a that's that's a, that's a that's a big one. That's that's a huge one. That's a final um, final boss. Yes, that's the boss. But uh, any other ones that you want us to see us work on? For example, like it could be like the Comstegnathus, the, the, com the is it Comstegnathus, right? Yeah, the Comsteg. There's the Comstegnathus. There's the Paradynonicus, or you know, um, just go online go ahead and check out the the original Chaos Effect uh, um, animals and uh, start shooting out your ideas, and then that will be what we will sculpt for next week. And we're super excited because they really are fun challenges and. A lot of the purpose behind the streams is we like to touch base on with every episode is this is also a learning experience for um, RJ and I. Uh, you know, the only way to really improve in something is to practice, practice, practice. And, you know, everybody says that, you know, the best way to be able to learn how, you know, to improve your skill is to practice. And it's really as simple as that. And practice not only allows you to, you know, uh, basically exercise new methods, but it helps you recognize ways within your process that either do not also do not work and that or that you can fine tune in order to um, better help with your workflows. And that's basically what we're doing. So it's a huge it's a learning process for us as well, which we're um we're you know we want to be able to take advantage of, as well as getting into that mindset of simply starting a project. Because a lot of us do have that new project anxiety. It's sort of a uh, it, it, it can be sort of uh, it, it can be a crippling anxiety when it comes to starting a project because you know it can bring along a lot of self doubt. It's a lot of different things that um, a lot of anxieties that come with starting a project. And to be able to get out of that, uh, you you really just have to sort of really get into that habit of just jumping right into it and not expecting too much of yourself. You don't want to stress yourself out. You just want to be able to go in with the intention of starting shapes and they don't even have to be good or in the direction that you completely want them to be but you want to do is just be able to get into that productive mindset and then something will start to come out exactly because said better myself it's all about kind of just taking chances and being experimental like these 
uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess you can say the uh, the origins of this kind of thing is like exactly what Justin said. It's just we wanted to kind of practice our skills more and really be in a creative environment, you know, to to start developing our our, our workflows and our processes and trying to understand you know, how and what we are doing to kind of improve and, you know, to, to confront the things that we, you know, may avoid because of comfort, which is, again, understandable. There's no, everyone's artistic journey is different and everyone's going to be developing at their own way, but so long as you are developing in a way that is, you know, conducive to you, what you want out of your work, you know? 100%, 100%. You're, it's, it, it's really pushing yourself to understand more of what you're capable of and how you're willing to fine tune what you know. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of see what you like and, you know, what, you know, do you want to do with your work? Because a lot of times, especially when you're starting out and you're very young, you're, you are, which is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to be talking about um, outside um, artist influences and things like that and how those motivate your work and um, how you want to be able to, uh, use those to sort of find your particular style and be able to create and a lot it usually ties into is that we tend to compare ourselves to a lot of artists out there or, you know in an artist of any skill set we always we always will look at other artists and be like gosh like golly how did they uh, you know how do they how do they get to where they're at now you know how when, when am i going to get to that you know we we can sort of you know it's it's especially when you're younger and you've and you haven't been you don't have there's not a, a confidence built up yet to be able to start a project and just go for it without, you know, and, and expecting that at some point it's going to, um, it will work out. Because uh, I feel like when you're younger, you don't really give yourself a lot of opportunities to be able to start a project and keep going. Um, so that's, that, that is definitely sort of, you know, that's sort, of, that's sort of the purpose with this, is we want to be able to, just to be able to flex those, you know, those creative muscles, that, that creative inspiration that all of us, you know, that all of us, you know, have with every with every image that we save online, every screenshot that we want to be able to motivate ourselves. We work on something. We want to be able to use those. Yeah, we want to be able to use those to um, to not self doubt and to not question our abilities, but to motivate us to keep going. Yes, definitely. It's all about you know just kind of you know everyone has to say practice makes perfect, which is true to an extent, but I would say perfect practice makes perfect, which is more targeted practice and more methodical. You know. It's kind of thinking about yes. like like you know yes you can understand the fundamentals of something but now when you're thinking about stylization or kind of like you know what makes your work unique and what do you want to make with your work is kind of about experimentation and just kind of finding out your interests you know what do you want to kind of do and how do you want to approach you know growing your artwork and growing you know your confidence in your work is about you know those new challenges that you'll meet. You need to go in with the intention to be able to make mistakes and be okay with making mistakes or finding ways that are basically just experimental to your, you know, your, your skill set um, as a whole. You want to be able to push yourself past those boundaries to be able to see what you're capable of, what you're doing. But you need to be okay with the fact that, you're, that mistakes are just as good as finding ways that do not work. Exactly. I mean, are just as good as finding ways that do work, excuse me. But... Um, yeah, it, it'd be okay with making mistakes. Be okay with pushing yourself, and not everything completely working out. It's it's that's the point. That's and that's partly what uh, what, um, uh, what Ryan means by uh, perfect practice is practice is not done with the intention to make a, a, a perf make some a perfect piece with each stroke. Yeah. You know, it's not that's not the intention of practice. We all know that practice. You know, anybody who practices like a sport, anybody who practices. You know, playing an instrument. The point is to be able to make mistakes, so that you know you can fine tune methods that work best for you. Exactly. And you and it increases your workflow to where you're out. You start to create things at a rate that um, you are more comfortable with, and you you yourself as an artist can be able to create more freely. You're allowing yourself to be to create at a, at a um, Basically, at, at a, at a um, in, in in all setting in, in a production level that you you that you are confident in. Exactly. And there's where the individuality comes. You know, it's the mistakes you yes. choose to keep. As I will constantly say, you know, don't get hung up on style. Style is a runoff of process. Process is the thing to focus on because once you got your process, your style are the mistakes you choose to keep. 
Those are like a book. One hundred percent. Those are a bunch of quotes that I've heard, but they combine together to make a really good snapshot of just the idea of just like have fun with your art, you know? Yeah, and and that's sort of a big thing too. Is uh, a lot of people. I think at some point when you start to there's a there's a at some point in your art career, if you do if you do go you know choose the art career, it's very easy to be able to blur that, and you lose your hobby into something that's more stressful. Um, you, it's you, that's what you want to try to avoid because then at some point then you just become traumatizing yourself with each time you're trying to do your hobby just for fun because you associate it with work. Yeah. And the earlier on that you can sort of separate between work and being and improving your art skills, uh, you know, through inspiration for fun, the easier it will be to be able to separate the stress factors that that basically run off of work, and you won't take those home with you. You know, you really do want to to leave those within a workplace or within uh, out outside of where your hobby naturally sort of fuels you and motivates you. Because you don't want to tire yourself out. You don't want to. You don't want to do self burnout. It's easy to be able to burnout from work is common. You can definitely get burnt out from work, but you can also burn yourself out. Yeah. You can do it yourself. When you have to be from work, it can be from just you you pushing yourself too much with the with the. Um, <laughs> With the intention of perfection and trying to find some art style, um, you, we don't want to do that. You want to be able to keep reminding yourself that you, you want to make mistakes. This is definitely, it's fun, and the more you're able to do that, the more art style and um, improvement will just sort of flow. Exactly, and I can speak from experience. I have taken on too much of what I can handle sometimes and I have like worked myself literally to like bed and I'm like uh, I can't move I'm so dead I'm tired it's 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 difficult isn't it it really is it is oh we got we got someone new uh chicks chicks uh chicks I think that's I think that's chick, chickens chickens teriyaki chickens teriyaki chicken. I I cannot read it I, 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 I'm just assuming. Forgive me if that's not if that's not the pronunciation, but uh, it just simply made us hungry. Yeah, this is true. Thanks. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. That's a lovely head for the creature you got right there. Thank you, thank you. I like your silhouette. See, this is what's really cool about about RJ things, everybody. So, out of the out of the six uh, different silhouettes that you see there he basically just takes the best pieces out of every single one it's like a perfect recipe and then he just puts them together in this beautiful amalgamation of just body parts that flow together into one beautiful feature it's really something to look forward to it's gonna be exciting well thank you i just kind of feel for me it works uh, again you'll find your own process and your own art journey and that's the beautiful thing about art it's your expression and how you kind of experience the world and make cool things with it mm -hmm. Um, for me, it just kind of works in a way because I, I like to kind of give myself options and then, and, oh look, another uh, person joined us, uh, Raul Ramos Art, welcome, welcome, welcome. I, 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 I think I know who that is. Oh, cool. I think he's super cool. I think he's super cool. If, if this is, if this is, if this is who I think it is, and you do the super cool sculpts, you're an inspiration. That's, that's right. Well, awesome. Welcome. <laughs> That's cool, but um, that just oh, and that actually that really that really is going to flow into today's topics of being able to, of uh, outside inspiration of different artists. This that's, this is really good. This is this is going to be a good session, RJ. Nice. Oh my God! Hold on. Uh, chickens and teriyaki is someone that they, is a museum alum. Justin, you there? Oh yeah, sorry. What? Yeah, yeah, chickens and teriyaki is a museum alum. Uh, they said they remember seeing ROCs at North Tickets. <gasps> oh my goodness! I, I now I I wonder who this is. This is so exciting. This is so cool. See, okay, everybody, this is this is another person. North Tickets is um, this is also at the uh, the Natural History the Museum. <gasps> oh my God! Nick. It's oh wow! Doctor <laughs> Nick. Hey, dude. Like, hey, dude, Nick. An icon. We hope you're doing okay. I hope you've been well. It's we hope life is treating you well, sir. That's crazy. I, I, I haven't seen you in a minute, buddy. Good to hear from you. He's so cool. He's such an icon. Everybody, if you guys get a chance to go to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles, we are all icons, and we all love it when you're there. Aw, oh, thank you for having me. Welcome. We, oh, we missed you, too. Thank you so much for being able to join the stream. This I know. It's really exciting. It's exciting. This is cool. 
I always remember. Nick has the craziest stories. I know. He's a champion fencer, uh, acrobatic gentleman, and just really cool. I swear, he's saving lives like on every single, on this every is, corner. This is true. <laughs> Everywhere. There's, there's, always some, there's always something crazy going on. It's super cool. It's super cool. But yeah, glad to have you here, buddy. And, like, you know, enjoy the stream as we kind of create creatures. And our maniacal rambling of being artistes. Artistes. <laughs> okay, so oh, that, that one's not looking bad. Let me just kind of futz around with the... Uh, let me see. So it's good to also have references when you're working, especially when you're going for a vibe. Normally, if I'm doing something more... <laughs> I'm loving it. Um, <laughs> when you're when you're working with something, it's good to kind of like have, you know, things that kind of... You know, a good reference is something that you're not trying to really much copy. It's more so it's influencing, you know, design process. Is getting those gears moving. But it's always good to kind of keep that in mind, like depending on what you're trying to do. Like, you know, uniqueness will come through with your choices as an artist. You know, not everything in your inspiration will get to the final piece. You know, some of it will come and go. It's good to have that as the initial thing. You know, and it's yes, not something you have to use. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You're going. You're going. Yeah, I, 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 I was saying, but there, there, one thing that we'll get into in a little bit after this, based on you know our our topics that we're going to pick into, is um, there is no right or wrong way to do these. As in, you know, you don't necessarily need to start from reference. You know, you can if you have an idea solid in your head. Sometimes you can just go off and do that. Um, I've done it before myself. It depends on what you ultimately are. Think of these as tools to be using in your kit. You know, when you're creating, that's all the really technique is in art. There's no really realistically there is no right or wrong way to do art there's no real like hard rules that you really have to follow but ultimately what you're trying to accomplish is like what is it works for my aesthetics and what i am trying to accomplish with this specific project and another thing we do want to be able to to add on to that is i feel like a lot i think especially during i remember this when i was younger a lot of people try to a lot of a lot of kids especially um during that recognition of being an artist, I think a lot of kids will try to not show or, or try to hide references. Because um, I feel like I think when we were, I think when definitely when you're younger, I don't know about you, Brian, but when you're younger, it, it seemed like if you if you used references on anything, uh, it was almost like, well, then it's not. People would say, like, oh, well, then your work's not original because then you're just copying something. Well, no. So that's definitely not that's not true, one hundred percent. Everybody uses references. Everybody does, mm -hmm. and. We want you to be able to, if you don't use references, uh, start getting into the habit of using them. It is 100% okay to be able to use references. Yes. Uh, if we, we want you need you do need to be inspired by other works. You do need to be able to other other people even may have an insight into a particular art form that you are trying to accomplish, and um, whether it be like it could literally be anything from like Lovecraftian like uh, repetitive physics to uh, like animal physiology. Like there's there's so many different uh, skills that people have out there and it's you can learn that from their art so do not be afraid to use references references are very good they will benefit you tenfold so don't be afraid of it go definitely the end uh, I think a lot of times too when you go on YouTube and different like social media and you see people sculpting it seems like they're just whipping these things out usually a lot of people they have like a secondary monitor or an iPad or something open and they do have the references out as well you just can't see them. So a lot of people do use references. It is 100% okay. Um, there's no need for anxiety about it. Go yeah. to town. I, I would just fill up folders. I, and I would just say it's just like you know, it's, you were people. It's you know, and the same thing with music. You know, um, you know, uh, is borrowed from one or another. There's nothing wrong for you not to original creator. Yeah, same. When it comes to references, you know, what, what you would just do with that is like, you know, it's a lot of things to keep in mind. Like when I'm studying anatomy, it's a lot of muscle structures I have to remember. And I'm, you know, the human brain is not super perfect. You know, you're going to remember the last time you remembered it. If I'm trying to, and practice helps, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, practice will definitely help you keep more, you know, in line with like it constantly knowing and finding those shortcuts. But if I'm tackling an art style that I've never done before and I want to get into, it's good to have like, what were the techniques that people came before me were doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Which again gets into our topic, which we were going to get into. Did you want to um, kind of take the lead on this one, good sir? Do you want me to? Because we're talking about uh, style, right, and stylization. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, Doctor Nick. Yeah, definitely, a hundred percent. Yeah, especially with music. Uh, it was like how was it, like music samples, sampling music, getting inspiration from like different beats, flows, even down to harmonizations. Like, there's 
we, we definitely 100% get that. Yeah. That's, that's very, very true. And it, but it just goes to show that references spread across through all, all various art forms and mediums, whether it be from the music to art to cooking. You yes. know, it, it's a lot of it is you are referencing. But definitely go ahead and kick it off. Definitely go ahead. And, and yes, I agree to you. I'm using Pure Ref right now at this moment, and I'm trying to get Justin to use it as well. <laughs> Do it. Okay. I will, I will. I know, I will. I'm, still, I'm still learning literally everything. I'm just such a such a new when it comes to stuff, and I'm so excited about it. I just look forward to everything. I look forward to learning stuff. It's just, it's so much fun. It's, it's, it's half the fun is learning everything. This is true. This is true. I will say this, though. This character is really fun, but, like, I'm happy to, like, really tr think hard about my design choices, even in this goal, because, like, it's so fast, we'll become the Indoraptor. <laughs> not careful. Yeah, yeah I, I, get, I get what you mean. Good old dog raptor meme. But, um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the topic we're going to talk about today is um, we were thinking about, was it paleo art and stylization, right? Yeah. Cool. Especially throughout, uh, throughout um, not just not just notable paleo art, but paleo art throughout the, um, throughout social media, through the community. Yeah. yeah. Like what, you know, how the art form is, evol is evolving constantly and, and how newer thought processes on paleo art are really you know cool and influential and like just kind of appreciating those changes but also um how that affects your work you know what going into what we're talking about referencing other artists or more so like taking inspiration from those artists or like seeing a new perspective that wasn't in your eyes before you know uh and, and kind of how it changes your, your your work and how that can be a really cool thing to kind of experiment not everything, you know, it depends. It's all about, you know, trying things out and kind of seeing what works best for you. Not everything is going to translate for your workflow, your interests, but it's always good to even appreciate things that you wouldn't stylistically do. And thanks for all the Purple Hearts, uh, Nick. That's, those are really cool. <laughs> but, yeah, um, did you want me to take the lead on this this first one, or did you want to go, Justin? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm excited. So, yeah, um, so I, if we're going to be talking about, like, paleo artists as influence, you know, uh, I, I would be. I, I would like to kind of talk about that. We, we were talking about a period of time that we both experienced, you know, and it's different for everyone. And some people may not go through this. It's just ultimately, you know, what we were both relating to each other on, like what this is and whatnot, and and how this kind of affected us coming into, or I should say, back into. That's the thing. It was coming back to that, you know. Is that there was a period of time where I left, you know, kind of creature illustration. It wasn't a super long time, but it was long enough for me to kind of like lose touch with things. And when I was coming back, the the, the community had changed and evolved, and it was something new and exciting for me. And there was a there's a book that I had that really got me. Oh, thank you. Uh, there's a there's a you're too kind. There's a book that I got. Uh, that I was put onto. First of all, there was a podcast that put me onto this, which was the Tetrapod Zoology Podcast, which was by Darren Nash, and he, he had a, uh, they talked about a lot of topics relating to evolutionary biology and you know paleontology and you know just the depiction of animals and you know creature design, and, and it wouldn't go so much into that. But some of his other co-hosts is a paleo artist named by the name of John Conway, and at this time they had just released a book which was called uh, All Yesterdays. And this was in like 2013, 2014. And this is when a new era of paleo illustration was starting off with the idea of a healthy dose of speculation in relation to like trying to render out the naturalistic animal. Now, so for the time, there's a lot of movements and I'm not nowhere near an expert, but I'm just relating what I know of the subject. And I would always say, get a nice primary source, you know, or a reference video about like what, you know, the movement of paleo art has been going through for, like, the past, like, century. It's, it's been around as a, as a scientific discipline. Um, I would say it's just, like, what they were looking into is the idea is, like, well, you know, there was an orthodoxy that, like, was overturned at the turn of the century, going into the dinosaur renaissance, for you who don't, don't know, the dinosaur renaissance was a period of time from, like, the 1970s all the way to, to, to I guess you could say, the 90s. Um, and, you know, Jurassic Park was the perfect exemplar of that, but it was, was a movement long before the film was there. But it was this shift from dinosaurs as being seen as these very slow-moving, stupid, you know, for lack of a better word, just, you know, dull, you know, animals that were just, you know, they were waiting to go extinct and, and be supplanted by the obviously better mammals, which we are, so a lot of kind of ego there, but, you know, 
you know, that's that's neither here nor there. The point is, is that they saw dinosaurs as just like, oh, you know, they were just, you know, lizards that were really dumb. Um, during the dinosaur renaissance, though, there was a new, a lot of uh, rediscovering, I should say. That's the thing people, you know, uh, uh, forget to mention is like, not a lot of this was, you know, the, even though that was the orthodoxy during like the 1900s, the dinosaurs were very dull, swamp dealing creatures. There was a lot of science at the time that did bring up the ideas like, hey, maybe these guys are related to birds or just giant birds are really energetic based on fossil foot tracks and comparative anatomy. So what, though that was the more popular idea at the time, it wasn't the only idea. What the Renaissance came through is that they found a lot of re, it was kind of like an enlightenment, or as you say, a Renaissance of these older ideas that, you know, were before the idea that dinosaurs, these, you know, were slow moving reptiles in the head. Maybe they were like fast and dynamic, energetic animals, you know, and dominated their environment, much like mammals do today. And that really changed the discovery of Deinonychus, which is, you know, funny enough, this relates to the, what we're doing right now, which is, you know, a, a dromaeosaurid raptor, you know, which you think of as a raptor, in which they were shown in. Jurassic Park, as a, you know, the animal, even though they would call it Velociraptor for you know marketing and coolness reasons, but you know I think Dinonychus is a cooler name, but that's just... it still is effective. <laughs> yeah, but the point is, is just that you know these animals. Oh my God, Justin, you're getting into the body. You're getting so fast. I, I, I the improvements. Keep talking. Keep talking. Anyway, um, and the Renaissance was a really cool time uh, in which a bunch of new ideas were coming through. That like you know. These animals were dynamic, and Bob Bakker, John Osh, uh, Osh, Oshram, and Greg Paul were like paleontologists and artists that were really championing this change. So they shifted the narrative, and with newer research, really painted the picture that these are fast moving, dynamic animals. And the body postures of these animals changed from upright and Godzilla esque to the more naturalistic horizontal. But there was the beginning of a new orthodoxy. Because they were so focused on showing casing the new anatomy, they focused very hard on the anatomy. So a lot of the animals, accurate as they are, were very, you know, comparative to like animals today, seem very hyper atrophied uh, uh, or, or emaciated by standards, where like you could see every aspect of the muscle and anatomy. And I'm not bashing this, I'm just saying it was just a response to the lack of that. So there, of course, was a, 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 a trend to show what we now know, you know? Oh, uh, question friends i have a question and def answer this whenever but uh do you guys like watch Jurassic park or anything with answers and break down every detail of the movement or how they look and and you're like that's wrong they wouldn't do or look like that for example i like i can watch Grey's anatomy uh, the answer is yes and no <laughs> yes we do we have but there's also the context of like where where paleontology is an interesting subject what we like to stress is like the idea of acceptance for that was what they knew at the time. Even if it was outdated, you know, still, even for the moment for Jurassic Park, there was a lot of things they could have done more. For example, they knew there were feathers on, you know, on dinosaur, on certain dinosaurs, and even the anatomy is a little wrong in some things. And then it took created liberties. For example, Dilophosaurus is like way bigger, has no frill. Um, but the point still stands. Um, there's an appreciation of that snapshot of time. Even what we do now is a snapshot of time as the animals though they didn't have the world and they were actual things, no longer, I should say, the non-avian dinosaurs, the avian dinosaurs are still around, but they no longer share the world with us. We only have their bones, and if we're lucky, some soft tissue. If we're really lucky, some in inference of color based on you know color spectrography, which is really cool. Um, but that's only within modern year, modern time, uh, more recent contemporary times that we've had that luxury of being that privileged to know. Uh, and there's a lot more research to done. What we try to uh, stress is that you're doing your best if you're trying to be accurate, if you're trying to go for accuracy as much as you can, you're taking your best inference for the moment and something new may overturn that, or you may be right and it may withhold. You know, there are things that we do have a better sense of that are kind of more, I should say, permanent, like the sense of anatomy, like where the muscles would be, and the sense of bone structure on these animals. But other things, which brings me to my point, when I saw that book all yesterday, was the idea of speculation, healthy speculation, you know? There, you know, there's a limit to what you could do, and not everything has to be super over drastic. But the idea of striking, you know, striking that thought. Uh, for example, if I showed you a skeleton of a goat, would you ever know they climb trees? It's a behavior that won't fossilize, but they do. They can climb trees. You see them in nature doing so. And it's not saying that is leeway for everything, but you have to consider that these were animals, and nature is messy and silly and very wonderful and weird, and animals will do bizarre behaviors, you know. And even human beings, we as an animal, do bizarre behaviors. I can say that, have you ever done that thing where you're walking on tiles and you just 
randomly for no reason sync up to the tile pattern when you're stepping? That's me on the sidewalk. I don't want to be on the. I want. I don't want to be like in the middle of, of the sidewalk like panel. I don't want to be on anything else. But that's a behavior, you know. If you're if you're like an alien observing a human being in nature, it's just like that's. Oh yeah, then they probably be looking at us like, what's with these freaks? Exactly, but that's something that you have to consider about when you're doing anything. And then we talked about this as a concept mm -hmm. before. Um, when you're doing great creature design or paleontological reconstruction, anything that you're trying to, or even character, this applies to. You know exactly. Everyone does it in some way, but that's the thing. It's perfectly natural, you know, to what we are as human beings. But what I'm saying is, when you could, what I'm trying to posit is like, when you're considering, you know, the 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 medium and mode of what you're trying to design. These are the things to keep in mind to really take your characters and creatures, whatever you are making, to the next level. It could be in an environment too. What it really I'm trying to say is like, when you think about these, you're trying to put them in the context of where they are and how they would be. Now, with paleontology, there's the added fact that these were animals, so you're trying to capture something that did exist to the best inference you have. And there's a lot of things you go there. Where it transitions from, you know, scientific illustration to more creature design is where you draw that line. You know, for example, Justin, if you want to give an example, where would be the boundary in your eyes between creature design and science illustration? Between creature design and science illustration, the 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 big defining thing there usually starts off with skeletal structure and, and muscle anatomy because creature design you could really do anything with it um, if you have some basic idea of just like where the animal already li you know it, like it doesn't really matter where the animal came from you can sort of come up with something fake and this sort of plays into like for example the um, like the white spikes from uh, was it the Tomorrow War like you a creature like that with just you know arms and tentacles and everything. Um, you can really make it however you want because it's going to be made for the screen. It's just going to be on a big screen, and it's going to be um, sort of sort of just for the shock value. Then when you start doing scientific illustration, you want to get into something like that. You begin to take more into consideration not just bone and muscle anatomy, but how the surrounding uh, the real surrounding environment of evidence that is already um, confirmed, whether it be like uh, the sort of like a the ecosystem around. Uh, the location, even down to where the location on the planet, because you know that that itself can determine how foliage looks. When you start taking into considerations like that, and you start seeing how the outside environment shapes the way an animal looks, that starts to become the more of the defining factor because you're no longer seeing it as a character; you're seeing it as a product of the world around it, as a, a product of the animal history that came right through. Thanks. So that's that's where you start to um, uh, that's where I definitely think start to, uh, to differentiate because. Yeah, one is creature design. You are thinking of just the creature. Scientific illustration, it's more that it's more than just the creature. Exactly. I would I would completely agree. Now, where I would pause it is another thing. The world between those worlds is so fascinating. That's where I personally try to inhabit. Yes. As we start blending the world of creature aesthetic and you know, artistic aesthetic, but also kind of a natural sense, and that goes into spec evo, spec fiction, you know, and, spec and character creation for world building. You know, you know, and I'm not saying both are, are separate from each other. You know, that they are completely linked to each other. It's just that when you go and start intermixing both mindsets of like I'm in science illustration mode, so I'm trying to render an animal and its environment as it was, you know, a, a thing in nature, and I go study for extinct life. If I was doing something for like, you know. If there was a museum, it's like, yo, we want this kind of thing, you know, to make a mural for like, uh, oh, David says hi, aww, we left, you left us, I'm sorry, <laughs> oh, Evie says hi, oh, Justin, Evie and David also say hi to us, no, oh my god, oh my god, I miss them so much, I you miss know, them so much. we miss you guys too, well. I hope you guys are doing amazing and living your best lives. We miss you guys so much too. It's good to hear from we all really of you. We really do. We think about you guys all the time. We really, we really hope that everything is, is just going fabulously for all of you. Oh, they're roommates now. Uh, awesome. That's absolutely iconic. That, that is, is super iconic, Ankali. That's that's a vibe. <laughs> um, but no, as as I was saying, it's just like the idea when you. And it, again, there is no right or wrong way. It's how you want to, and that's the great freedom of you know being a, a visual development artist. At least from what I'm saying, is that you know you can lean into whatever which you want. It's a spectrum of creation and, and ideation that you can do. 
And, you know, for me, my personal taste is, like, I, I really love the intersection between the world of, like, what would be science illustration or the, the, the mechanism and, and, and techniques and kind of, I guess, ideology of science illustration, but then compounding it with, like, creature and character art and kind of that sense of, like, conceptual design. And, you know, a great artist that represents that is James Gurney, where he practices and he terms it imaginative realism. Mm, okay, okay, okay. And, Remember you bringing this up. And that, I love that so much. <laughs> that is something that, ah, I, I, that is my supreme vibes. I, I live for that so much because, it, to me, it just hits everything that I enjoy. You know, I, I love building a world of believable you know, characters, even if it's the most crazy things, like if I'm building like superhuman gods, I want there to be a, set, a certain feeling of groundedness in their, in their existence, and they feel like they inhabit a three-dimensional space and that they do affect the environment around them. Yes, yes, it is a great book. It is a great, great reference book, you know. And for those of you who do not know, I just want to be able to remind everybody that um, RJ does have a podcast coming up. It's going to be coming out soon. This is true. Um, where he does go a lot, uh, uh, he does talk about a lot of these um, particular topics in, a, in detail with a lot of the, um, with a lot with a lot of guest speakers, and it's really really interesting. And he'll be sending out announcements those in the future. But we just want you to be able to be aware that there um, is something. There's really exciting things coming along. So just um, stay tuned for those. It is. You could find uh, the show when it's coming out. It's coming out very soon. Uh, we're kind of slaving for this fall it seems and you know everything's looking good for that but it's the mindscape museum podcast and um you can follow my instagram at rj nieto, uh, nieto illustrated at instagram and for uh, uh for details when that drops but yeah i go into topics relating between the world of narrative and visual art and i interview guests everyone from paleontologists scientists to viz dev artists about the intersection of those worlds and i frame it as a museum gallery because you know what i'm a huge museum nerd and you know, like i said we came from the world of the natural history museum as employees but it's something i deeply care about and that kind of feeling you know it's very much like eyewitness vibes you know eyewitness and nova vibes you know yes 100 it's super it's really exciting and uh yeah definitely stay tuned Yep. Uh, okay, so just kind of give myself some context. I am so proud of you, sir. You literally are on the bodies now. The speed. I'm excited too. The speed of which you. How are your, silhou how are your silhouettes going? Are you starting to refine them down a bit? Because yeah. I can see I can see what you're doing over here on my other screen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so kind of really excited to go into what I'm doing now. So I, uh, to catch up, I was going on a long tangent there. But hey, uh, I did my silhouettes. Now I'm just selecting the ones that I enjoy. I picked my top three, and I'm going to merge. So I really enjoyed this fellow. Let me just kind of get like a little separate layer going, so I can kind of orchestrate what I'm doing. So I really dug this guy, this guy, and I'm really vibing with this one right here. And I'm going to take them and combine them into one alt master silhouette. And that will be the one I start refining my creature design on. And that's my a little bit of my process. But yeah, I, I really, really find that, that it's very helpful for me to quickly ideate, you know, and not worry so much about the details because I know myself, like I work, I'm a very detail oriented person. You can ask my friend, uh, my friends, you know, and they said that's one of the things that, you know, that I have to worry, um, I, I kind of have to work about is like, you know, simplifying my shapes a little more. But again, I still like being detailed in, in other, when it calls for it. It's like, the idea is like learning when to be detailed with, with precedence and purpose. You don't have to over detail everything. You don't have to worry about every single detail when it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. You can, if you want to, and there's nothing, I'm saying it's a hard no, but I'm saying it's one of those things that you can consider when you want to, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, I have. Especially when it comes to. Because you don't want to start. Because sometimes you'll start detailing things way too early on. And then you, they'll. Sometimes, uh, especially if you're working for a client, um, you may need to make some pretty harsh adjustments with whatever you're working on. And yeah. it could totally blur out a lot of details. So a lot of times, those, those details need to come later. Yes. I couldn't agree more. So I have these two gents right here, which are kind of the same body shape. Just a little, little stouter legs. But I really enjoy what they look like together. So I'm going to start deleting the things that I don't need and actually it kind of it kind of works out you know not too bad the thing is though I want longer legs on this on this fellow and I have a silhouette right here that I had and I think these two together will make one singular entity so I'm gonna down that actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna take these guys and make some copies I'm going to go back a little bit just to make so sure I don't, you know, do anything there. I'm going to put these in a separate thing with references. 
And just to set up a quick reminder, everybody, um, if you are working on a project with us, um, after the stream, don't forget to uh, post it. Post it online. It's sort of that you you want to be able to get into the habit of also networking and posting our art, even if it is a work in progress, or even if it's just practice. We want to be able, you know, you want to be able to show what you can do. So definitely post it. Tag us in it so that we can reshare it as well. Yes. Um, because we want to see what you're working on, and it doesn't have to be dinosaur. Remember, you don't have to be doing the exact same thing that we do. Do something that you like. Do something that helps. You know, uh, helps practice your skill or your passions or whatever you want to do and make mistakes have fun with it yeah exactly it's all about the fun okay so i have this guy right here i'm going to start erasing the things i don't need so i'm going to keep a little bit the integrity of the shape for this guy and that looks good actually but i'm going to start getting rid of the things i don't need so there's a lot of legs it looks very jumbled <laughs> Don't worry, it's going to start making sense in a second. So, let me just do that. I will tell you guys again that we were super excited for this. We were so excited for this one. We're excited for every single one. Oh, thank you, Drew. Your work is phenomenal, too. Everyone is doing amazing stuff, and I'm, I just love seeing what everyone comes up with. See, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew it was Raul Ramos. He's, he's such an icon. He's so cool. He's an amazing sculptor. Absolutely iconic. But, and also brings us to our secondary topic which is inspiration in um in modern social media and how that um how that influences us because a lot of the paleo art that you know rg and i grew up with definitely stemmed from a long time ago for example uh for me it definitely was jurassic park and if unless you guys don't know the origin story uh back in the 90s i had obviously jurassic park i had that special uh the special collection one but it was on a um, on vhs and it had the uh, you know it had like the gold t-rex on it um, and, uh, well, I played it so many times that I ruined the tape, and it was a really sad moment. It was almost, I had just basically held a funeral for that thing, and, uh, I had to throw it in the trash, and I watched the behind-the-scenes over and over again to sort of satiate my need for Jurassic Park. Um, well, with that, uh, and I was also watching the Lost Worlds, uh, uh special, uh, yes. special features, which is just, just as good, just as good, um, I started to get inspired by the work of uh, Stan Winston Studios. The name of Stan Winston at the at the time is uh, now Legacy FX. But I was super inspired by all the work that came out. I remember I started making like dinosaurs. Like I started making like dinosaurs out of cardboard. And I think my first my first three D dinosaur technically was I drew a dinosaur on like two pieces of paper. And then I and this was back in the nineties. And I and I cut them. You know I cut them and I taped them together and like stuffed them with like. With like shredded paper, so it made like a almost like a like a paper plushie of a dinosaur, but that stemmed from watching all those talented artists over at um, at uh, Stan Winston Studios, then Stan Winston Studios, uh, watching them sculpt the Tyrannosaurus Rex and, and sculpting the Velociraptor and the Dilophosaurus, and watching those animatronics work behind the screen, you know, behind the scenes. It was super fascinating, and that was definitely part of the drive of where I uh, you know, where I started. It wasn't um. You know, then I then then different uh, different ones started to come online. Like um, definitely from the art from like the Dinotopia books, those are a huge part. But how that evolved later on in the future is we now have, and RJ and I were discussing this, is we are much more connected now as a paleo art community um, through social media, and we have a lot of people that are creating amazing works, which are uh, modern day uh, paleo art inspirations for everybody who's you know able to be exposed to uh you know to their creations and whether that be like um you know like uh fred the dinosaur man wallaby who's joining us because his well is amazing. a legend i know i remember i remember your work now i was like i as like the path of titans art and i was like this is so rad and that samurai t-rex I, I i love your stuff and so, that and that is definitely that definitely plays into um our topic of uh Mo the modern inspiration of of individuals that we're just connecting to on social media and we're able to be to see this because we weren't able to we couldn't see those back then when we were kids um you know it was only what you can get out of national geographic magazines when you checked them out of the library but definitely now uh we have so much inspiration from so many corners of the media it's absolutely fantastic and we should we should be able to be to definitely support those because i know that and, and this is part of the reason why RJ and I want to be able to make this stream is sort of to reinforce that sense of paleo positivity because it's very easy for individuals 
to just kind of start attacking other individuals based on their paleo art without taking into consideration probably the context of the art or the style that the artist came from or things like that. Um, but we should really embrace even the, the modern the modern paleo art um, of uh, of today. It's because it's absolutely fantastic. And what, what was Arjana? We were we were talking about. Um, how did it go? We were talking about. Is it ah, exactly? Okay. Yeah, we saw, We were talking about how uh, not only do it like does the art um, do the art that we create. It's inspired, but and you know and nostalgic, but. Even if it's scientifically accurate, it's reflecting a time that we as artists um, respect, which was the growth of paleo art throughout the years. Yes, really, that's yes. what we want to talk about. Is it's very um, even though some things can be, you know, there, you know, nothing is technically one hundred percent accurate. In fact, a lot of terms that we like to say are just scientifically up to date because things are going to change within the next like months, years. But um, def, uh, it, a lot of it is very is a lot of respect towards the inspirations that we came from growing up. And we continue to make those today uh, because it's it's nostalgic for us. It's part of that drive that defines us as an artist of where we came from, and it's super special to us. And that's why that's why a lot of us uh, a lot of us do, it, and that's why a lot of that um, inspires us, even if it is even even if it's a little bit more dra- I guess dra- dramatized, a little bit more dramatized, well, a, little say, more, um, I, yeah, a little bit more exciting. It exciting. Be a little bit more exciting. Well, I, w- I would say it like this. I would I would, I would kind of put it in the context of this. We are like like any art his uh, art um, art movement. There is art history to those movements. You know, there's nothing wrong with creating an impressionist piece because you like what that is, or creating a cubist piece, or you know, the works of the Renaissance masters and focusing on the anatomy or anything really. Paleo art is no different. The difference is is that we sit in a in an interesting position where we're both art and science illustration. Um, we're different than you know. We are slightly different than like medical illustration because you know you're looking with something that is kind of even in medical illustration there is great moves to kind of excite and make interesting com- composition because there's still the art of the piece. When we create our works, you know, it's always about understanding the context of what we are trying to accomplish with said work. If I'm creating something that is supposed to be paying homage to like you know Mark Hallett or you know Greg Paul. I wanted to be you know, upfront about my inferences, and if someone's coming from that, if they're you know just starting out and that's their influence, there's a, some kind of an honesty about just understanding like that is a part of their journey, and they'll grow. Um, to speak from my experience, because I can't speak for everyone's, I can only speak from mine. So when I was growing up, some of my influences, you know, science illustration wise, was the zoo books, and I, we were just talking about this. We were going down this rabbit hole with a great, you know, love and time of the Chasmosaurus. We love, you know, that blog post. To, it's a paleo art appreciation. And that's ultimately what we're trying to say is there's an appreciation for the art movements that came before us who captured a moment in time, you know? And as the science progressed, as exactly, zoo books, as we know more, of course, things will be left behind by the wayside. What we're saying is offer a safe space for people to learn and grow and appreciate, you know, the fact that we have such interest in paleontology and the past and that we can, you know, learn more and be excited about where we were artistically versus where we are going. You know, nostalgia is something to reflect on, but what it starts to transcend is when it becomes not only, um, it becomes, when nostalgia grows, it becomes fuel for vision of what we can achieve with our own contemporary work in the here. I love those more graphic pieces. I love kind of an old 70s, 90s, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s science fiction novel, novelette or graphic novel, or, or you know, that kind of painterly Wayne Barlow-esque, you know, kind of look and feel. That is just, you know, my, my tastes. But where I apply that, is that when I'm trying to make a you know, modern reconstruction that is up to date, I'm an extinct animal, for example, if I'm doing a Tyrannosaurus, that influences my my execution, but my thought process is on the contemporary science of the animal. However, if I'm making a piece for fun, you know, I have the knowledge and inference that I could just go with what I knew then. You know, I we have such good knowledge and we're gaining knowledge every day the more accurate life appearance of these animals. But if I want to make something look inaccurate, I have the knowledge of what it looks like accurately and what it used to look like at the contemporary knowledge of the time. And that's what I pull from when I'm doing my designs. For example, my Jurassic Park Tyrannosaur was, you know, inspired by, you know, the the T-Rex of the novel and the science they had at the 80s, but at the same time, my little influence inflection was, what do we know now as well? If this is a genetically engineered hybrid, uh, chimeric animal that is an approximation of what used to be an actual Tyrannosaurus Rex, what would be the difference then? 
and what would be the change. Oh, and as a real quick thing, so I have merged my little silhouettes, and now I'm going to begin the process of really detailing him out. So I'm going to start with lowering the opacity and start doing a block, a block of sword drawing, which pretty much means I'm just going to look at the anatomy structures of what is in the silhouette. But uh, Justin, would you like to add anything to that? You know, not really. That was actually really good. That's basically the real point. It's really, it's really good. It's really uh, insightful. Um, I, I, forgot what I, was, I lost my train of thought. I started. I sorry, because I glanced at my plate of fries, and then I just it, fry, it went out the window. Fr fries really do that, though. Um, but uh, I don't know if I can add on to that. It's already amazing. Everybody just accept that as that is. It it really is. It really is. RJ really knows how to be able to take a topic away. Oh, really um, yeah, try. I think what it comes down to is ultimately this. Creating a safe space for people to explore the wonderful medium and genre of art and allow them to make those mistakes and explore and grow in a safe environment and that, you know, it, it, that we can share knowledge, you know. The, the great thing about this is that we do not have to gatekeep. We can be inclusive and really start helping people, you know, express and get interested in prehistory and, and, and the sciences through art and then you know through the arts in general like i love getting people excited about you know the nature of creativity and their creativity and, and exp expressing you know you know their artistic vision of something and, and growing that you know and, and enjoying the process you know by the way everybody um arch i talked about this before <laughs> We'll get. Well, we get so into it, we'll just become silent all of a sudden because we just get into the zone. No. It's just, we've been we've, we've been really looking forward to this one like all week. It's really cool. Uh, Nick has a question. Friends, question: What would you say was the hardest part of getting into all of this? Like, for example, Justin, your three D stuff. Ryan, your painting software. You want to start with this one, Justin? You know, what? yeah. Per personally, I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with you guys. Um. It definitely has to go. The, the definitely hardest thing is self doubt, 100%. Um, because it, it, you know, as far as inspiration out there, is amazing, but especially as, especially when you're younger, um, the self doubt of being of probably questioning what you're capable of doing sort of tends to overpower that motivation of trying. Um, and so that personally, for me, that was always the biggest thing was just the self doubt, and. Um, and that is, and that's not necessarily something that you could just say, you know. Oh, I just, you know, I gotta believe in myself because that takes years. That can definitely take years. Um, people say like, uh, you know, just believe yourself. You can do it. It's like, okay, well, you say I can do it, but I don't know if I believe I can do it. And that's a huge thing because that's a whole learning process on you. That's yes. the whole way that you, because you're the you, you are the you're the only you you're ever gonna know, and no one else knows better you than you. Which means that you know your weaknesses, you know where you're going to self-doubt or even be down yourself. Because a lot of a lot of artists, is, is, as creative as we can be, and the things that come out of our heads, we can create things that are just as dark and attack ourselves on it. It's just, it's sort of, that's the kind of the thing about being an artist as a blessing and a curse, is sometimes we may not be the nicest people to ourselves, but we can hurt ourselves in very creative ways emotionally, like, can't do it, you know, da, 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 you know, all these different things. So a lot of that, the hardest part is being able to teach yourself that it is, that you can do it. And if there's something you do not know, you will learn because that's how you do everything in life. The only way you're able to do anything in life is because you had to learn somehow. I mean, there's not one thing that's, I mean, I don't think there's one thing technically that you just downloaded as regular, you know, you just use the Bluetooth when you were born. Like it's just not how it works. You know, everything exactly. you have to learn from walking down to 3D modeling, you do have to be able to learn. And you didn't know it before, you had to learn it. So you have to kind of re revisit that and remind yourself that you are okay and you can do it. It's just gonna take some time. Exactly. And what it comes down to is allowing yourself to fail. Art is failure. Yes. And that's the thing is normalizing the failure of that process. You know, so much of my life when I was, you know, younger and just starting out was the idea of being so mad at myself for not being able to achieve, achieve something that it took people years, decades of their lives to, to do. And because I could not see that, you know, I only saw the results from that decade's worth of study that, you know, that lifetime of, you know, of just living. You know, art is not also about the action. It's also the inaction of things. To live also influences your art. You know, as you go through life, that it bleeds in. You know, when you're not really feeling up to it, you're depressed, and you're, you need to 
address your mental health, that affects your art. Like the idea of the, the depressed art is a very harmful, the stereotype is a very harmful one because it only banks on the only reason why we, the only way an artist is creative is when they're suffering. When no, we, we make amazing things when we're good and well rested and like, you know, in a, in a great place in our lives. And I think it's a, normalizing that for yourself takes, you know, patience and understanding and, you know, self-love. And that's, that's, that's a long process for people, you know, to undertake for some. Uh, others, it's different. Everyone has their own journey. But ultimately, what I'm saying is it's about understanding, you know, your needs and your wants and listening to yourself and allowing yourself to take time to relax, to take breaks, and not, not beat yourself up for that. You know, there will be other times to practice and, you know, just to kind of focus on what you can do. Yeah, and that's the tragic thing about like you know, you know, depression. You know, these are very real things, and it's always good to take them seriously and seek help when you can. I can speak for my own. We, hmm? we should do that as a topic. Remind me later on. Let's do that as a topic for um, yeah. uh, art, artistry and mental health. Yes, exactly. But getting back to what I was saying in relation to here, you know, a, a great thing is about uh, uh, what I'm trying to say, and like we and Justin are trying to preach is just you know. We want people to have fun with their art and, and to explore it like with the childlike wonder that you had when you were little, when you created OCs, you know, with no, uh, when you created OCs with no, with reckless abandon because you had no judgment because, you know, you were just having fun. That's how you great, get great stuff in your work is when you can reconnect with that sense of whimsy and wonder. And, and that's what I, I, that's at least for me, that's what I, I, I thoroughly enjoy. It's something that I really, really love. Another thing that we do want to be able to tack on to all, all artists out there, and hopefully, you know, ho hopefully the, these podcasts will are, are relaying that, but um, all the feelings that you feel as an artist are 100% valid. There is, if, if you're stressed or you're getting anxiety or depression or anything about it, all your feelings are 100% valid. And there are people out there who, like us, who are willing to listen to you. And even if we can't 100% help, we, want, we do want to let you know that we are, we we are here to listen. We do want you to know that you are not alone in the world, and everybody deserves to know that. You all deserve to know that. We you have a friend in us. Yes. And I would say, you know, for those of you who are ready, if you really need it, seek professional help as well. And I know it's a yeah. interesting first step. I can speak from my own experience. It took me a while, but hey, it does help you. Like anything, there's just tools in your kit to help you take uh, take on those challenges. But yeah. But getting back to what I'm saying in the relation of these characters and creatures, sir, that is looking amazing. I love what you're doing there. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. Like, you're really getting, like, faster and getting this rendered. You and I have the same idea. Yeah. I've talked about this for the longest time. I know. Because I'm looking at yours right now with, with the, uh, I, were you thinking the tail balance thing? Yes, yes. I was thinking you could yeah. run maybe bipedally every now and then, you yeah. know? Yes, 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 yes. But uh, right now I'm trying to kind of give it more of a... It's funny, when you do reptilian meets mammal features, you just end up with a synapsid. Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. You just come back to, it's like, those really early funny. those early stem mammals, and, you know, I'm okay with that. I can, I can do that. But getting, a good time. getting to the audience a little bit, for those of you drawing along and those of you who are interested, you know... What are some things in your art that you, you know, you still, I always like to ask this, and Justin and I always talk about, what are things in your art that you want to grow on and, and challenge yourself to get better at? What, what are your points of improvement? Or what have you improved on? What are you proud of yourself for kind of really taking on and, and growing in, you know? Yes, what are you proud of yourself? What, what are your accomplishments? Even if they're small, like you, you chose a different pencil and you like the color that because it's making your shadows look great. Like what are what are every little every little thing is an accomplishment. Share it with us, so yes. that we can we can definitely talk about it because it's it's a big thing. What are the vibes? Give us the good vibes. Let us let us know all the good vibes. Put the ear like that. And I can... yes, yes, yes. There we go. Actually, you know the crest. Maybe not. And some things about the art is also learning to like you know maybe that's that feature is not working as much. You know. We're reducing it. Did you see if this thing had like fins at the end of its tail? Or it it, it, it kind of does. It kind of has like fins going down the whole tail. Yeah, I was curious about that. <laughs> my, my mouse just died. It's okay, I'll just use my, uh, I'm still using my pen. I got a little, I got a little concerned. I feel that, I feel that. Drew says, I'm definitely proud of taking chances, be it small, stuff like choosing reference on subject over another, or being involved in an ex ex exhibition, for example. That is awesome! 
That's cool. Yes. Yes, Andrew, you were telling me about the uh, uh, taking chances and trying out photography, right? It was uh, definitely. He, he said that um, you know, you know, phone using your phone is nice, but like, you know, why don't you experiment with a nice DSLR? Whew. Ooh, that's good. I, uh, for me, uh, just, actually, Justin, you go before me. About what? What are you What are you proud of? What am I proud of? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you know, you know what? Um. I ha recently I have been going for it a lot more, like just just going for it, just not try not to plan things out too much. And I, I definitely think that was def uh, a part of the streams too, and it's helped me see that. So we'll call that as like recent growth. That like hey, I fleshed out a. I don't know if you guys seen the very first episode of this, but I made just like a head and neck, and of a of a of the um, what was it the the uh, ankle ranadon. The ankle ran out. It was just a head and neck, and that was it. And then the second one was like a little bit more, and then this one has got like a body going on. So I'll say just kind of going for it and not being afraid. You know? That is that is it's commendable. An improvement. That is commendable. What about you, my guy? Share with us. I feel like I'm getting a lot better with my shape language and to kind of being able to rapidly fire these guys off. For example, like these blockosaurs have been really helping me out, take my designs to the next level. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, look at this guy. He's, he's coming along, and I'm very proud of like you know where he's going. But one thing I still want to not do is uh, is fidget too much. Which uh, what I mean by fidget is just kind of like overworking an area when I should be working the whole character. That's another thing that takes practice. But I, I've done that a lot, and I'm just trying to you know curve it where I see it. You know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? I know 100% what you're talking about exactly. because I still do that. <laughs> it takes it takes time. So that that is definitely that is something that I am working on too. I'm definitely working on that. Yeah. Let me just focus on this. Okay. That's the thing that we like to we like to be able to show people uh, who are tuning in is that we're still learning. Also, we're 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 definitely we're definitely learning. We don't know everything. We'll we will never know everything, and we we all but we're more excited to be able to learn because everybody knows that one that one moment when. You learn something new, and then you just start. Your mind just goes crazy on how you're going to be able to use this, like in the future, to influence your art and make your art, you know, more fun. So it's it's always a fun experience. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. There's so many great artists. I'm going to start my next phase of this, which is going to be kind of a more detailed sketch. Since I got the block of sore, and I like to keep my little black silhouette underneath, but just lower opacity, or actually, you know, depending on how I feel. Just kind of have some visual reference for me. I don't do it all the time, but sometimes like this, when the lines are a little thin, uh, I like to kind of keep it just so my eyes can see, because I I'm, don't have the best sight sometimes. But now I'm going to be start digging into this guy and doing some more detailed line art, and then I will take it to the next level of coloration, and then... If I have enough time, most likely do my like three little poses of like action. Yeah, because we're going crazy on these. This, this is fun. This yeah, this is, is really cool. We really, we really went for it on this one. Just trying to. I always get so inspired by those people who are on ZBrush and they 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 sculpt for like two hours, like just two hours, and. They just make the most coolest things within two hours, and I'm just like, what? Oh, like, just, it's a, people are just so awesome. I know, I it's, love, it's so rad. It. See, what I wanted to kind of pay homage to is like, it's supposed to be like a dog, you know? Yeah, so, I don't know if you've seen the arms on my guy right now, but I definitely get you on that one. Yeah, I put, I went with more like that in the features of the face. Like, well, you did too, but like, I also put like, I'm putting mammalian like ears. Yes. Oh, you're putting ears on yours? Yeah. Neat. Okay, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. I'm actually using, like, my dog as reference. Because he's, he's, yeah, he is a dog. <laughs> yes, can confirm, is dog. It's so, f again, I, I just say this as, like, not really joking, but it's, like, serious. It's just, like, yeah, well, you really just stick on, like, mammal traits onto, like, a, a dinosaur. You just get a synapsid, which I'm okay yeah, with, which just, I'm... Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. But I'm loving this little, uh, devious little fellow here. 
Well, you know, is it really devious? He's got, like, good boy DNA in him. Yeah, he's not... It hasn't been established whether he's, like, murderous tendencies. You know what? Again, he is part of the chaos effect, so... You know what, though? Uh, just to be kind of, like, a little contrarian, uh, I'm gonna make my headcanon, like, these guys are, like, nice chill hybrids. Like, oh, okay. Well, the other rapper was, like, vicious murder machine. This is, like, complete opposite. They're just, like, they got so much dog DNA that they just kind of want to play... I love that. Well, I thought they was. I thought they were supposed to be direwolves. Are they? Yeah, direwolves. They're direwolves. Yeah, that, that, that's what I read. Oh wow! I did. Something like that. Uh, I don't know, but even then, that's just like a that's just like a regular wolf. It's just a little more ancient. Yeah. Wasn't that the big the big thing is that people saw direwolves as like they were like these giant super wolves, but in like in reality they were like regular sized wolves. Yeah, but not only that, but like they recently did a genetic study where I don't think they're even wolves anymore. They're like something else. They're, they're like, like they're like related to like dogs, which again it seems like an interesting kind of distinction. <laughs> and then it also sounds like that's something that would make sense just because of the way dogs are today. Yeah. Oh, it cracks me up. Dogs are wild. Dire dire dog. Dire dog. Dire dog. There you go. What if they just called it that? That would be iconic. That would, would be kind of iconic. I would live for that. Okay. So like. I'm gonna give this guy a little bit more creepy, 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 creepy arms. You gonna go creepy arms? I'm gonna creepy arms. Yeah, because he has those weird thin arms, and they're just wild. I'm trying I'm to. Like, why not? I'm trying to interpret like the anatomy, like you know. I'm gonna, and sometimes restarting. You know, it's always good to like restart if you need to. No shame. I'm not getting rid of the whole no thing. No shame. hundred hundred percent. No shame. I'm not getting rid. Everybody knows. It's okay to restart. It is. I'm not getting rid of the whole thing, but this frill thing, I, I wasn't. I was kind of fumbling around with like what was it, and I'm thinking it's like okay, but this would be so that would be a crest on there, but the, the starting from the neck, I think this would go down here like that, and then it would erupt from the back, I think, as another kind of like what is it? erupt? Yeah, I like Nazi speak. It's a good movie. It, it, it's a good film. Uh, what the heck is a basilisk lizard? It's kind of like frill. Like, is it bone or is it like cartilage? I forget. A basilisk lizard? Yeah, like the little fins they got. I have no idea. Don't ask me. Um, <laughs> like, I, uh, I went to school for rock. Ah, gotcha. So it is bone. The bone and crest. So this would be like a part of the skull. So the extension would go to... Okay, okay. I, I know what to do now. That's why references are good, because I was kind of not sure what to do with the, even though I put it there, like what would the anatomy of the frill be. But now I know. Okay, let me just erase this. Art is one of the, the mucky people who has the, he has the, the different monitors. This is true, I try. That's cool. It's we, so cool. We make do with what we got. You really have to make do. The longest time I didn't. And guess what? <laughs> I was still drawing. You just need, you just make do. Yeah, you make do. You don't need the fanciest tools to make great artwork. You really don't. I'm doing this on a Mac. I'm using my iPad as for references. You, you really just make do, everybody. Oh. Thanks. If you really love what you do. Nothing stops you. Yeah, this is true. Thanks, Ariel. I'm. Just, that means, aw, that means a lot of review, man. That's, thank you. I, I try. I want my, I just like, kind of like, you know, a nice sleek boy for at least this creature. Because if, you know, dog, big, big greyhound energy, it feels like to me. <laughs> Let me see. So it would be like this, you know. So, Raul, I don't know if you heard the uh, question earlier. What are, what are some things you're proud of recently in your own art that you've been developing, or something that you would like to work on to improve on? You know, as you know, we're always trying to grow and develop as artists. What are things that you're, you know, and when again, it could be something that you're just proud that you executed, or you learned something new in your workflow. 
if you'd like to share. We gotta get music in these live streams. I know. I just wish you know. I, I, I have to do research on like what is there. what is um like what's the word for? Oh well, mm, I'm so hard on myself. I feel that. I I know. Oh, <laughs> I could be so vicious. But for just one moment, you chill to yourself and see what what have you done? We won't tell anyone. Awesome. This is true. He's, he's oh, like you're, a, you're you're so awesome. You're like a legend. <laughs> he is a legend. Hello. He is a legend. How could you say like a legend? He is a legend. This is true. He's a he more. Is a, he is a he is a treasure. He's an international treasure. This is this is true. Like a rare species. Can you hear screaming outside right now? I hope not. Sorry, there's just a. Sorry, everybody. I live in Hollywood. There's usually some random person screaming outside. I think. Oh, okay. Well, we're sorry. I think taking a chance every now and then. Of reaching out to people. Yes, definitely. Make those connections. Make friends. Make friends. Yes. That's cool. See, that's that's good. That's that's, that's see, that's valid. It's always good to like make new connections, meet new people, and you know, just grow. That's the cool thing. And we've talked about that too. That it's a uh, it it really it fuels you as an artist. Yes. You know. It, you know, living also is a part of the work. Yeah. Yes, you need you, you need to to that is something that we're still working on is living outside of our work. Yes. That's a part of the workflow. <laughs> it's not just the art you make, it's also the living you take. I haven't done that yet. I th I did go out I did go out uh today to go drop off some stuff, but that was it. <laughs> okay, at least you went out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You know what? I, I really wish there was. I'm hoping at some point in the future that there will be a. Um, they need to have like a Jurassic Con. I I. I Why don't we have that yet? If I if I may, I'd like to expand it from Jurassic purely to like a pure like a straight up like, like not just like the monster thing, but like something a little more like where you know how like Darren if you're not aware like Darren Nash like has a has a Tetsu Con in like London where it's like. A convention of everything tetrapod zoology so like everything pretty much animal life you know so fish amphibians frogs all all the creatures that got limbs and backbones but no, i don't know yeah like a thing like that that's yeah, super cool it's cool but they, they also expanded it well it's not going to say expanded but they also have the you know, paleo art there it's literally just it's a place for people who are like nature nerds to vibe out and and you know hang out with each other um it's a little too many. That's so cool. But um, what I'm saying is, I, I would expand the concept a little, little more. Where it just you know, it's it's, it's just. People. Oh, it'd be like paleo art in general. It'd be like everybody dinosaurs and everything. You well, know? like not just that, but creature design. I, I love to get like the people who make worlds together. Well, then that would be like Monster Palooza over in Pasadena. Would it be like Monster Palooza? Straight up. Yeah. Have you been? Uh, yeah, okay. Then, then we're going to Monster Palooza, sir. We're going to go to Monster Palooza. But like, do they have? It's all, it's it, it's all about. It's literally because they have a whole section of artists that are just like you and me, and they have because and they just have to show the work that they do. They make I mean, their own kind of monsters, their own kinds of creations, and they sell it, and they do amazing work. Um, you definitely do need to check it out. I actually, I feel like. That's gonna be on. That's gonna be something that we need to do, RJ. You gotta go check it out. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta stream it. Put on them GoPros. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of down. Yes. Okay, I think. Okay. And, and another thing also to consider while you're designing is when you're already getting into the design flow, improvise. Improvisation is the spice of character design. You know. Mm -hmm. For example, I just threw on this kind of like you know raptor-like claw on his thumb. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a, it's definitely a diff that's definitely a weird creature. Oh no, but I don't think anybody's been putting in a, can they put in comments on the next animal that we should? Do? Oh yeah, yeah. If you if you just coming in, um, feel free. Okay, so we there is a stipulation. It has to be from the Chaos Effect line, except the Ultima Source. That is the final boss. We will get to him. It's just that that's the last one we want to do. But other than that. Um, do you have we we're putting up to you find folks to kind of guide our hand for the next one that we want to do so what did you guys want to see did you what, what kind of spe species did you want to see me and justin take a crack at 
because we don't really want to have favorites because that's kind of the point of this too. We're just kind of going with whatever, you know, what whatever uh, the crowd wants. Exactly. <laughs> because it'll help us. It it, it it helps us to just push ourselves. Because what if it's something that we don't know how to do yet? And yes, do exactly. Do exactly. That is how we grow. That is how we grow. Mammoth, mammoths. Was there a mammoth? Uh, no, I don't think there's any mammoths in that one, Doctor Nick. But, and uh, if you go to the, it's it's uh from the Chaos Effect toy line. It's a 1997 Jurassic Park, the Lost World toy line. But I feel. I mean, hey, it, okay, so I okay, yeah, uh huh. There are trucks. He's he's sass enough. I know he is. But uh, there but there is something like that though, isn't there? Isn't there something With like the mammoth? Uh, Let me think. From the toilet? No, line. not like the mammoth, but there was like. Oh, the, the um, Tyranops. There was Tyranops. But the Tyranops is a. Were we going to do Tyranops? Because that's a. I think we should. We, we should do all of them at some point. We're going to do Tyranops. Yeah. It's the same thing. It, it, it is. not. It's, I mean, not. It's the same oh! Thing, oh, we're also the Cub Stagnathus! Wow. Yeah. Cub Stagnathus. Ooh, that's going to be intense. I'm down for that. That one, one might be a that, that one might be a winning one right there. We'll have to see, though. Let's see what Nick says first. Nick, just agree. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm not being I'm not being biased, I'm just being biased. <laughs> we'll eventually get to all of them. And don't worry if your yours doesn't get picked, don't worry, we're we're getting to all of them. Every last one's gonna get done. I agree, but also Demetrodon. Good picks, but okay. So I think we got. It's a hard. It's hard to choose. This is true. I'm down for Comsec Nathus if you are Justin, which I don't think I have to ask. Sorry, I just had a complete cough attack right now. I don't know why. <clears throat> Do you want? Oh, I almost died right here, right now. <laughs> don't die, what? please. The world will be <sighs> robbed of your artistic you vision. But I was also eating a fry at the same time. Okay, I, I just feel like I came off that fast. <laughs> Okay, but Consignathus. Do you want it? Okay, I think I think we want to do. I think Justin wants to do Consignathus, and who am I to deny I'm actually him? Really down. Because if you guys, if you guys, don't, so sorry, Doctor Nick, I love you, but like because um, I don't know if you've seen any of my art on the on Instagram, but I did a, uh, years ago. I did like a Consignathus, Consignathus, uh, Consignathus. So I just kind of, it kind of, I just kind of have like a soft spot for that. Okay, then I guess we're, I guess we have come to a conclusion. <laughs> That's hilarious. I rem <laughs> Don't hit us so hard, man. I remember... Are you okay, Justin? Oh, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm just... It's, 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 gonna, it's gonna be a moment while I survive. Here. Okay, no problem. Just, you know, don't die. I'm trying not to. It's the, it's, it's the fries and the water. It does seem like... Oh, God. Okay, I'm, I'm alive. Let's go. <clears throat> I'm alive. Okay. Whew. Golly gee. Nick is saying it's wild to see the progress from like the time he saw us at the museum to where we are now. It's kind of wild for us too. <laughs> All of us oh. are. Rollo says I will try to sculpt and draw along next time. Haha. Yeah. -ha. This is making me want to drop client work. Got to be responsible. Yes, oh, be yeah. responsible. But be hey, responsible. we will be here. We will be here next time, good sir. And well, um. <laughs> RJ and I are also going to be doing our separate, um, uh, we'll be doing separate streams as well. And um, we're planning those out as well. But it basically is just kind of like, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just almost kind of like a one on one kind of thing. Like, it'll be like RJ one day, I'll be doing a thing like on, on a different day. And we're just going to be kind of having fun and making creatures and doing kind of our own personal challenges to also help us personally grow as artists. Because, yep. uh, you know, you, know you, you gotta you gotta practice and you gotta have fun with it. Yes. Normalize fun and art. Yes, that's kind of a lot of what we're trying to. Uh, that's a lot of what we're, we try to reestablish with ourselves. It's too. fun, you know. Just have, and also just get out the comfort zone. Like I, I need to do more crazy things and uh, perspective. The thing I want to do specifically is like drawing my creatures and care, drawing my characters and anything and cool, crazy poses. Like I said, I came from more of a. We we're talking about influences of like art, so like 
Justin, what would you say was like the kind of world of art you were in, like before, like well, I wouldn't say dinosaurs before dinosaurs. They were always kind of there. But I'm saying, what were kind of your early influences that you feel like have still always been present in your work to this day? You know, my early influence, a hundred percent. Um, it would just it was it was um, partic okay specifically. Uh, I won't say Jurassic Park because even though that is a huge part, the Jurassic Park is a product of an art style, and a lot of that art style was 90s, um, definitely 90s science fiction monsters, uh, particularly from like Stan Winston, like Stan Winston Studios. So it was not just like the T-Rex, but it was also like the Kathoga, or it was like those the lizard, the lizards from Zathura. You know, a lot of work that they did because I, I primarily I, I looked at that through them a lot, and this was also before. This was when I was younger. When I didn't, um, I didn't know about a whole bunch of other studios, so I didn't know wholly about like like what a workshop or a studio ADI, different ones like that. You know, primarily as a kid, for me it was like Stan Winston School. Um, so a lot of that work, a lot of that '90s um, special effects, is where uh, that's where I came from. That's that was that's always been sort of an overwhelm, uh, o sort of a an overall theme of my work, and I think when you go through a lot of my work, you can definitely see that, and you'll definitely see it in the, um, in the, uh, I've been told this a lot, in my character, the eyes of my character, because I'm a really big fan of, of the, of, um, make my characters have personality, like the Velociraptors had that, that snarky look in their eyes, the T-Rex had that, that dark eye socket that just kind of looked very terrifying, um, all the way down to Kothoga, where they have, like, tiny little beady eyes, I just, uh, I, that's you'll see it where it, you'll see that's where it stems. I'm very um, '90s uh, Stan Winston Studio Crash McCreary Stan Winston esque type of art. That's what, about, okay. What about you, Arjun? Because I know you have I know you have inspiration. No, I do. I do. Uh, Wayne Barlow was a big one for me. James Gurney, as I said before. But if I had to be very honest, to kind of get off a little bit of the beaten path, just to kind of orchestrate some things that I really want to say. A lot of my influences growing up were like Jack Kirby, John Buscema. These are like Marvel artists from like the 60s. I have a huge love of like Silver Age comic art aesthetic. You know, the kind of poppy Americana graphic, graphico kind of look. You know, Mark Schultz. Uh, I think that's his name. Uh, Frank Franzetta. Uh, you know, these very graphic comic book science fiction kind of pulp. I'm a big fan of pulp, I should say that. Yes, Jack Kirby. I'm a huge fan of like you know pulpy, comic booky, graphic kind of things. But the intersection that I've always kind of it's kind of interesting. I always like to say it like this. I I love if you had to describe the vibe I'm going for in my work. It's as if you were like you fell asleep reading a comic book in a 1980s museum. Yes. I like paleontology. So it's like this feeling of like I like to kind of. I like more contemporary art. I do. I really do. But I like the, uh, a, se a sense of grain and grit and kind of like a outdatedness to my work, in in a sense of like feeling, not so much in, the, in in subject matter. Like when I draw my dinosaurs, you know, specifically trying to be accurate, I like to make it as accurate as I can be. But I like to make it feel vintage. But I also like to add a sense of graphicness, like you have just found this old comic book or this old illustration book that you know feels like a lost media item, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of feeling. I, I like to kind of play with a sense of nostalgia and like a, a playing with a sense of like memory and then like uh, ideation. You know, and a, a great part of it actually also is pulled from like, you know, influences like, you know, um, Art Deco and and um, I'd even say like, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, impressionism. 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 Oh, impressionism. There we go. God, I can't speak. Um, so many words. I know, so many words. But I, I love. Impressionism. I love the idea of kind of using, you know, implying in uh, detail with you know texture. Thanks, Dick. Yeah, yeah. It's something that I really enjoy. It's something that I really have fun with. It's. Also, just letting you guys know out there, uh, we don't just do dinosaurs. RJ and I are obsessed with a lot of other things too. Like, I like Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft is cool. I really like, as I said, comic books and science fiction. Mm. I, I love, you know, good science fiction novels and whatnot. Um, but yeah, no, I'm into a lot of things when it comes to like my creative stuff, and it all influences my designs. Ryan really likes that. Um that very interdimensional space. Yes, I like that. analog horror. The, be the beyond, yes. Yes. 
Okay, now I'm just going to do some rechecks because I want to make sure this guy is good. So his wrist would actually be a little higher. Feeling. It's a you know it's a it's a very specific feeling that I try to go for. I love how quiet you guys are. I know we should have like more things. The focus, the intensity. It's kind of funny because I don't know about you are doing, but are you listening to the music on your end too? Uh, no, I should be. I should totally be, but I'm not. I I have a, because I have Spotify going on in the background, so I'm just listening to like some, just some like acoustic guitar vibes. Nice. By the way, I want when you guys are creating out there, because I know I'm not the only one out there, what do you guys like to listen oh, to? Oh, yeah. Because I, yeah, like, what do you listen to? Because uh, Arjun and I will have listened, Arjun and I will do like listening parties where we'll be sculpting or enjoying again, and we'll be listening to some crazy stuff. I do like a lot of electronic kind of atmospheric vibes. Yeah. Yesterday or was it yesterday or two days ago? It was like two days ago. Two days ago, we were like listening to like Mall Soft Vaporwave. Yes. Other days we're listening to like some hardcore punk, and then like some other days we're just like listening to the Jurassic Park soundtrack. So what is what do you guys like to listen to? And or if it's a podcast, like what do you guys like listening to? Me and Evie are just watching with the highest attention. Oh, <laughs> Hey, Evie! Good to see you! Hope you've been good! Get the perspective on this a little better. What's going to get? Yeah, so be here. Maybe this would be here. Maybe this is okay. Sometimes I mumble to myself when I'm like designing, like if the piece can hear me talk. I do that too. I get what you mean. It's just like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna go here. Sorting your thoughts out loud. Exactly. It's like, oh, you're gonna go here and here, and that's where you're gonna go. Okay, cool. I think I got a good line drawing. I think I got him in. I'm just kind of add some little, little things now. Let me turn off the the guys and let me just focus on getting him. Oh, good. No, I spent too much time on this guy's details. I, went to, I should, probably should just like, ah, it's fine. I had fun. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna start like, I was gonna start beating up on. It. I was like, nah, it's fine. I had a fun time. Because yeah. I don't have the hands on this guy yet, but I don't think it should take too long. No, you got it. You know, I'm craving right now. All of a sudden, sushi. Mm. Sushi's good. Oh my god, I could go for some sushi. That's why I love living back in Southern California. There's just so much good food here. There's a lot of good sushi. Drop the chest a little bit. So, cool things is like, you know, for those of you just starting out, but if you are experienced and you know, uh, a thing that has always been in my existence is constantly searching for, um, I, I know Justin me and I talk about this all the time, finding tangents and trying to get rid of tangents, you know? As far as in what? I know yeah. you say we talk about it, but you're going to have to rejog my memory. Oh, no, there's <laughs> tangents, like when you're doing line or line art, and it's like when uh, the lines are uh, competing with each other because there's like lack of clarity in the shape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. like, oh, you know, this thing, and that's the thing I always like to think of. I was like, oh, man. So, you know, finding the tangents and trying to make sure that I, I get them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if I miss some, that's fine. But, you know, it's good practice, especially if you're going into more professional work, to always kind of find the tangents where they are. Okay, 
just add some more details of lines to where this goes. And this goes here. And the face is a little thin. Let me just start darkening things. Line weight is a very important thing too. Your lines have importance. Thins kind of mean a more lighter kind of silhouette in some areas. Thicker or darker lines kind of emphasize things. So it's always good to kind of know where you're putting them. the Scorpius Rex we should probably have like a it'll probably be like a super stream like it'll just be like we just gotta have like real it's gonna be like epic but we got Scorpius Rex sorry the ultimate sorry Scorpius oh, Rex Scorpius oh my, Rex. my my brain it's okay see they see see if, if uh, Camp Cretaceous threw in like the the, the Ultimasaurus instead I would, I would I would have lost my mind I'm actually you know what's so interesting is I actually thought they were gonna do that and I, I, I actually ended up really liking the Scorpius. Obviously, everybody knows I actually ended up liking the Scorpius Rex because I made, made like a figure off of it. But like, it's such a, it's it's so unique. But it, and I, and Arjun and I talked about it. It's because it does the design of it does stem to like the original Lost Jur Jurassic Park for concept art. Yeah. Of the of the the human dinosaur hybrids. Yes, it's pretty crazy. But there were human dinosaur hybrids and. It, it was just it. There's it's. It was so. There was almost like an homage to it that I think I just had a lot of respect. Yeah. For it, so I just had to. I had to embrace it. I was like, this is. I feel this that. Is absolutely fantastic. So you kind of add this. Add, uh, I this. this. I'm gonna add some like little. What's a crooked? I'm gonna add some like little kind of flat kind of osteoderms on the top and like some little flourishes on the end of the tail to kind of make it feel like it's the, an homage to those things. I just want them to be referenced a little bit more, you know. Have intent with your designs too. That takes practice. Don't worry. You always, you know, keep keep that in mind. So, got this gent in. What else would I add? Uh, let me see. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add some quills on the arms to kind of pay respect to the quills I gave on the ankles. I'm sorry, adding some feet on this guy. Just out of out of a. I think I'll, I'll just sculpt the feet from scratch. Usually, I have like a, um, I have like a theropod, uh, foot sub tool or uh, save tool that I use to basically just kind of map out and incorporate. But this guy's a hybrid, so I guess it really doesn't matter. And another thing you can also do, you know, don't be afraid to warp, because I do that all the time to fix something. <laughs> so like that arm. What if I could? What if I could? I wonder if there is a. Let me try. Let's see if I can warp something in here. You technically, you I, technically I, I could. Watch the thing end up looking, and it's going to end up looking ugly. But I'm just fine. I want to have fun with it. No, no. But like, if you have a lattice tool, that's like warp in 3D. Oh yeah. Oh no. 100. percent There's like so many things. My my particular favorite one is the like the bend curve. Mm. It's just, there's. Let me go something like that. Yeah. Actually, that's not bad. There you go. That's, that's much better. That is much. Up. That is much better. Sorry. So like, what I was fixing right there was again a tangent that I, I found where like the arm was blending too much into this cur this elbow was lining up too much with the rib cage here so you lost kind of the detail of the arm mm -hmm. so i'm going to do that it's much better oh i'm using photoshop to just draw and uh you're using zbrush yep a rooney okay so i got this fellow in i'm going to start doing some rough shadows just to kind of you know put it in Dr. Nick has seen our, all of our journeys. This is true. He has seen all. Okay, I'm going to add some feet into this bad place. Uh, you know what I would have done? You know what? That's fine. Oh, hold on. Uh, we will say that is the coolest use of bend curve I've ever seen. Can you do that when the mesh gets more dense, too? Oh, you know what? No, you, um, if you mean like on retopology, if you, uh, if you have like if you like divide, 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 and then you try to do a bend curve, I mean, um, in that case, I didn't. I I know that you can't because you can't. Ha you have to have like the, either the lowest red. Yeah, I, you can. Okay, so actually, can you? Um, I know you could. You can, I think, but you do have to delete all of your. Um, 
all of like your lower resolution or, or high resolution, whatever you want to do it at. And I believe that if it's if it's clean enough, you can reconstruct your subdivisions. Um, but normally, like for example, like if you have like a like I'll show you an example. This is what I know. Remember, I'm not I'm not I'm also not an expert on this. I'm just a I'm just a Justin. Like I, I learned everything from YouTube University. We'll just go for rocks. But like yes, yeah, like I know you have like your bend curve, but if you start to like divide, I know that ZBrush won't let you because it's composed of multiple subdivisions. But I believe that if you do delete lower and then you delete all your lower subdivisions and then you try to like warp it and then we can see if it'll, you, I think you could re, yeah, you can reconstruct your subdivisions, but I think it just depends because then you could just go higher again. I don't know if you could do it to multiple, uh, I don't know if you could do it to specific pieces. I've tried to write, I would like try to highlight like, um, or not highlight, mask off particular pieces, but, and then try to do it. But I think it just, it warps the whole sub tool or whatever you're trying to get at. The vibe gets thrown off. All right. Yeah, is it, I don't know why ZBrush does that. The one thing I, I don't, the one thing I wish I, I get annoyed of is the, um, when you want to mirror and weld and you already have like the high subdivision and then you're like, well, I know that you can like, you can basically, you have to like make a copy and you can like put it down and then you could, you know, you could actually project the detail over again after you like mirror well it's just there's a lot of little operations that i guess are for the, the it's for the good of zbrush but some of them really make me want to like throw my computer out the window well i know you express an interest in learning like blender as well yes i do want to be able to learn how to use blender maya is someday. very interesting but it's it's i feel like you know it's a great start for things you know rather than like I'm, finishing it I, I don't know how to describe it so far in my experience I don't know how to describe it either. When I first, I tried Maya once back in like 2000 and like 13, and uh, I uh, like at a community college back in hometown, and I got so frustrated with it. I think I dropped the class. I was just so mad. Then I self-doubted myself. I said I'll never be able to 3D model. No, oh, but look at you. And uh, yeah, that didn't. That did. Uh, here we are. <laughs> you know what's so funny is um, I, I tell everybody. I told RJ this this story about when I started 3D modeling. Um, because I always wanted to make dinosaur action figures, or, uh, figures, artic super articulated figures of prehistoric species. And I knew at some point I wasn't going to be able to make them out of clay, because nobody really makes figures out of clay. You know, you got to, you could make them digitally, and then you could still make figures out of clay, but it's just such a process. Um, you know, then you got to slice them and dice them and everything, and start putting articulation, and it's just easy to do that digitally. When I first opened ZBrush, I got so frustrated with it, and this was like, by the way, this is in 2020. Um... I got so frustrated with it, I closed the program, I didn't open it for like a week. And then I told myself, you know, you know what, I want to know how to do this because I, I got to. This is what I want to do, I love doing it, and I'm going to figure it out. And I ordered like three pizzas, and I like meal prep pizzas, and I just sat at my computer for like a week straight and watched YouTube tutorials and just trial and error, trial and error, and just started trying to figure things out. And, uh, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm... I'm not doing bad. Uh, Things no, are kind of coming together. That's an understatement. You're doing amazing, at least in my opinion. Thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> but uh, when in doubt, meal prep pizza it out. This is that's good advice. I like pizza. It's amazing. Lemon pepper pizza. Marco makes. I think messages me every other day, trying to make sure that I get pizza. Oh. Super kind. That, uh, can't have pizza all the time as much as I want. No, no, I need you to like convince him to make Marco makes pizza as a secret food channel. He needs, no, he'll uh, he'll three model pizza. That's what he'll do. Do that. Let's open it. Let's open a dinosaur themed pizza restaurant and call it Sorry and Slice. You know what? How about we just open up a real Jurassic Park with like state of the art animatronics and then we have that. We have that. a Sorry and Slices. Yes. Hello, that John. Would be what we, uh, that would be what we, uh, hello, John. Hello, John. <laughs> That's almost as iconic as the Obi Wan Kenobi. Hello there. Hello. There. Yeah, exactly. Let's get this movable feast on the way. An iconic line. Uh, just for those at home, yes, we will reference Jurassic Park many times in many different ways. We're just uh. How many toes did you give your thing, by the way, or fingers? Or I gave I gave mine like uh, I gave it like four on the four on the feet, 
and they have four on the feet, hands and feet. Okay. I got, I got like the raptory dew claw. I got the, the the sickle claw, a dew claw, and two fingers. Okay, I'm trying to because I'm trying to figure that out right now too. You said sorry. You said one more time. What? So on the feet, I gave it like a a sickle claw, two toes, and like a dew claw. Okay. And then on the hands, it's three fingers and then like one thumb, kind of sickle sickle claw thumb. Okay. <clears throat> okay, gosh. I'm craving wing stop. That should be their song now. We're also not sponsored, by the way, but we RJ and I have this affinity for Wingstop. To consume dinosaur, you can draw a dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> one of, well, I mean, yes, one of the boneless wings. This is true. I apologize to everybody who finds that I eat my wings boneless. It's okay. I just don't like the bone. It's too scary. I was going to say... Oh Can my god. Your rational fears, RJ? I'm kind of curious. Uh, my rational fears? Yeah. Um, let me think hard about my rational fears. It's such a random question, but I'm just like genuinely curious. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because like fear has an interesting way of showing up in art. Mm -hmm. uh, I think an irrational fear of mine is more like <sighs> yeah, I really gotta think about it. Not because I'm not afraid of anything, it's just I gotta think about it. <laughs> Can you imagine just saying that? Wait, a rational fear? I'm not afraid of anything. No, I definitely have fears. I just don't recognize them at the moment until they appear, you know? Oh, that's even worse. No. That's the thing. I think my irrational... Okay, okay, I, can expl I think one I can explain. Um, you know the, the, the taxidermy hall, like at NHM? Uh, the one upstairs? Uh, uh, yes, not, not upstairs. The, it was the one in the heart. Sure. Of, uh, no, no, it was, um, no, sorry, sorry. A hall of mammals. Okay, there you go. I was okay. That's, that's a lot more specific, yes. Yeah, hall of mammals? Okay, so... Mm -hmm. There, remember the, the taxidermy tiger they had? Uh, no. You were at NHM way more than I was. I was hey, at Tarpets. Tarpets, okay. So there's a taxidermy tiger they would have over at the, um, at, at the Hall of Mammals, and that thing would always freak me out. Uh, my brain would always, like, make it move. I'm, it's like, I know this is, exactly, uh, yeah, Nick knows what I'm talking about. So, like, I don't know if that's a rational, well, it's, it's a rational the context, but, like, it's, like, some sort of, like, primal things, like, big cat, big cat scary. That's kind of funny. I love that, though. But, like, but, like, literally, if I sat there, I would be so uncomfortable because I'd look at this thing. As beautiful as a specimen as it is, don't get me wrong, I love big cats, I love tigers, and I think they're beautiful animals that you know, deserve to be protected, and, you know, as conservation, we got to do a lot to make sure they have an environment. We still have these natural wonders and steward them, but that's another conversation. I'm just saying, my my primate brain fires off in a very very like caveman way, or just a very animalistic way. Where like I gotta run. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, like it's 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 a feeling of like utter like terror. I, I get like very like tense and shaky. That makes that section really. That's actually really nice. Exactly. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, it's really interesting. No, really. I like. I feel like a prey animal. <laughs> I just look. I just look. Uh, I think, but I think that's a relation really experience I had as a kid, where like I encountered a cougar that that terrified me. Like in in like in the wild. Yes, like yes, yes. It was in the wild. I was uh, I went to Camp High Hill as a small lad in fifth grade, and there was a night hike event, which you know they would do, where they would have the kids walk like a maybe about like mm, fifteen feet in pitch blackness. It was a straight line, you know, they would, they had, it was like this little thing they would do just to like show you, like, this is, you know, the woods, and this is how, you know, dark, you know, the forest can be with no lights in the cities, you know, just kind of like, you know, oh, we have the kids go run around the woods and learn about nature, you know? Yeah. And I did, and I remember I got to this creek, it was a dry, so like we saw what it looked like during the day, and this is, you're going to walk this in a straight line at night, and you would just go through 
uh, one area from you know from one camp counselor to the other on the other side, right? That's all it was. It was a straight line, you know. That was it. Okay. Um, so I remember I walked. I cleared the forest, and I got to a clearing, which was a dried riverbed. This was, like, during, like, winter, you know? Okay. That's yeah. Good. So I, I get to the area, and it's shining. It's, it's lit by the moon only. No, there's no lights. It's just complete pitch blackness and the, the stars, you know? How poetic. Exactly. So I enter this rocky riverbed, and I'm walking the path, and I'm, you know, I'm able to see for once. So I'm able to, my eyes adjust, and I'm able to look ahead of me. But I can't see what's around me. There's still dark you know, brush around me, and there's like a little, um, what's we're looking for? There's like a little, what would be an island during the while the river was there, and now it's just kind of exposed, you know? Okay. And there's gr uh, okay. brush there. But I'm walking, and all of a sudden I hear a low, like, growl, like, you know, it was just like very, like, very low, and it felt like a cat, like a purr, you know? Okay. And I was like, I, I got so panicked at just the sound alone. Like, I got so intensely scared. Like, my hair was standing on my, on my neck. I just I just ran. I, I ran so fast and so hard. It was like the scene in Jurassic Park where it was like, go, now! You know? And I, I, I ran so fast that I actually ran into and tackled the other camp counselor that was waiting there. And they're like, they're like, kid, what's wrong with you? I was like, there's a monster out there. Like, there's no monster out there. Well, next morning, we, we make it back. I lived, I was okay. But the next morning, I go there, and I'm eating in the, the, the mess hall with the other kids, and I'm going to get maple syrup, and I, I peer around the corner, and there's some other camp counselors talking with each other. And I overheard them. I was like, oh, my God, we could have, that was so terrible. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, did you see the report? There was a cougar in the area around that area. And, like, I don't know if that was exactly what it was, but in my mind, it's like, uh, I, uh, uh, I could have been, I could have been prey. I, I could have died. <laughs> you probably were, fool. I know. Oh, Nick was saying, is like, hold on, a couple things. Do you have an ice age, uh, age of mammals, that skeleton with a saber tooth next to the bear skull? I would say, yeah, exactly. Those, those jaws are terrifying. Have you ever got so scared that you just can't breathe and you can't even make a sound? Yeah, that was me, exactly. The same tangible feeling, like I could not make a sound. I was so terrifying. All I knew instinctually was to run as fast as I can. Oof. A moment, a moment like that. So I don't think that would count as a rational fear. That was a rational fear. I just said in reaction to that, I think my rational fear is like, I have like this aversion of like big cats if they're like a taxidermy, because I don't know, they terrify me on a subconscious level. Dr. Nick mentioned the Colombian mammoth. The, the, you mean the big, the big, big boy? The big one? The the one where when they turned all the lights off in the museum and then when you were walking back from the front desk and there was just a giant silhouette there standing against the the nothing? Yes. I took a picture. I have a picture. I'll have to like post that just to traumatize everybody. But oh no! <laughs> You're villain. Terrifying. You're being villainous. Villainous. Yes. That's what they call me. I am chillin' villain. <laughs> All right. I've also oh, just heads up for people watching. I have started the coloration process. I added a nice little oh. flat layer, and now I'm just kind of going into like cool patterns. Now, normally, what I would do if I wanted to really take this further, I would do a bunch of color swatches. I would do like another six variants, you know, and then do like patterns, and then refine to the ones I actually want. But you know, for time's sake, I just you know I'm just kind of going with my gut, which is okay. You don't have to get too serious. This is all for fun anyway. Now, another thing is like when you're kind of designing creatures like this, it's okay to kind of go off the beaten path and kind of experiment with what you think would work aesthetically, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you want to keep the feeling of like what you're, you know, for at least in these projects, we're keeping the feeling of what we're redesigning, but like trying to update it as well. Yeah. Just trying to make it a little bit unique. Just give a little spice. We're just spice. We're just making it spicy as well. We're making these these fellows spicy. Yes, I'm using them as a digital color palette. RJ does this thing where he like starts changing the hues of like everything, and it just it's like this magical, like psychedelic, awesome looking thing. It's it's super cool. But thank you. I try. Put some back toes on this guy because I I need to add those those fins and stuff all over him. I haven't done that yet. Seven eighteen. Oh, 
I have time. We have a. Yeah, we got time. We, we, got, we got time. Yay! I mean, Yay! Yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. Let me try some spike patterns. Oh, Rollo said, that's the most fun of a part of a redesign, keeping the essence of the original while adding a fresh new look. It's a cool balance and uh, cool balance to try to achieve. Yeah, exactly. It's always fun. Uh, that's my favorite part, to be honest. I like trying to kind of keep the feeling of something. It's, it's more like you're going for, for me, and the way I, at least I interpret that is I always go for the memory of something. Like, how did it feel when you were little? Yeah. Like, when you're a kid, your imagination runs wild with, like, and takes the concept given to you, and you, you really try to take it somewhere interesting and new. And that's kind of like what I always love to do. It's like, well, this is what it was, but what did it feel like? That, believe it or not, I definitely 100% that we mean. This is a fun month. We're having such a fun time. Yes. Doing some cool designs. Let me see. Also, everybody, we do want to be able to remind yourselves that to take breaks, drink water, get snacks, because when you're in the zone, you will definitely ignore all of your body's needs. It's literally just a biological thing that we do when we happen to focus and we're really in the zone and we're just kind of having all that serotonin going in. You will start to ignore it like a natural painkiller. So you will forget that like you need to go drink water, you need to eat food until it's like too late and you're just like, oh no, and then your face is on the floor because you passed out because you have blood pressure. This is true, I've done that. Yes, so please be mindful. Maybe even like prep snacks in between, have a timer, to make to remind yourself to eat snacks. Oh, that's a doctor. You know what? Yeah, I do. I actually I do have some pre-saved anatomical parts. Uh, I don't necessarily. It, it depends on the animal that I'm working on, but I do like have a. I RJ seen this. I do have like like a really generic theropod foot. Um, I can pull it up, I guess, huh? All right. Yeah, show. show them. Okay, let me see if I can... Da -da -da -da. Or maybe it's import. Did I import? No, I'd load to it. I'm just going to load it to it. Get it so scared I'm going to mess this up. Um, no, you got this. I believe in you. So, let's see here. I'm, like, scrolling through my list of everything. So like this, I do have a, I do have like preloaded subtools. Um, so it, I can like at least have an idea of like, and if I need to be able to go in and change it, well then I have like sort of the beta version um, of just the, uh, like just all these spheres and everything. They're just so that I can kind of understand segments and where bone is and everything. Um, but I do have a, I will keep presets like that just to be able to save me time. Like, I, I know I did that for, like, for some uh, Spinosaurids, for some upcoming figures. Uh, that's what I did. And it's it's easy because, it's what's nice about it is then you can just go through and, you know, adjust where you need thicknesses add or if you need to warp a couple little things. It's just to be able to have an idea, you know, a fleshed out, you know, piece like that. Um, but other than that, but usually then, um, but that's usually as far as I'll go. Uh, like this guy right here, this guy's a hybrid, so I didn't really need to do that. But, um, other things I will. I don't think I did that to some, um, I know I did to some Spinosaur hands, because I don't know if you know that, but Spinosaurs has, like, Spinosaurs have some pretty unique, um, finger segments. So I'll do it like that, especially if I'm going to be making, like, several of one, you know, figure. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um... 
But uh, that's what I'll try to do. I'll try to uh, if it's if I'm gonna be making like multiple sometimes of one figure, I mean of one uh, animal, like a Spinosaur, like a, for the Baryonyx and Supermimus, then I will make like a sub tool because I know that I'm gonna be using it like twice. And then all I really do is I just kind of inflate it and then uh, I'll inflate the tool, manipulate a couple little things so it matches the look that I'm going for, and then uh, and then that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. I try not to overthink it. Um, Especially since the majority of things that I do are not necessarily supposed to be anatomically correct. If I was, then I'd probably do a little bit more work into it, but uh, that's just not, it wasn't really the purpose of you guys. Okay, I gotta move these. I know it's fear, just way too. I think I can move one down. You know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of like orange to spice this up. Make it spicy, my man. This is true. Ah, there we go. Some nice pop. There we go. Start doing the YouTube, the other YouTube live stream so that I can show like because I'm dude, I'm so excited to be able to put videos on YouTube. I especially my Minecraft series. I'm nice. Just, I got a Minecraft series. Oh. Dude, well, yeah, you saw the Enderman. I did see the Enderman. Uh, yeah. Justin so is really good at Minecraft as well. He's got some cool creature designs relating to Minecraft. For you guys who don't know that, I'm I am starting a. Uh, I do have I'm starting another YouTube channel where it's not just it's not dinosaurs. Because you gotta be able to show that you can do other things. I gotta show that I can do other things rather than dinosaurs. But I do want to be able to. But it also is a way to help me practice making figures and articulation and stuff like that. And just to you know help me out. Um, I will be making like I won't be selling them because you know you just like really, I can't sell everything. But uh, I will be doing like um, a Minecraft series where I make like hyper realistic looking Minecraft uh, characters. I'll, I'll, maybe at the end of the stream, I'll probably show like a glimpse of those. Ooh, show it. But um, it's just another thing. Just fun stuff. I just love making stuff. I know I do want to do like SCPs. That'd be kind of cool. It'd be really fun. I do. I, I did make like the harder to strip. How, what Marco and I tried to do that at one point, and then it just kind of. Went. Hey, yeah, Doctor Nick, definitely. Okay, so let me you know, Doctor Nick, that uh. I'm, I'm one of those builders. I'm like, I, I'm the guy who spends the entire time like building a house and building like a castle and a city and a village and then enslaving all the villagers and then making a million farms and stuff like that. I'm actually playing right after this, but <laughs> my friend just got a, a server, so we're gonna be uh, figuring that out and I'm actually really excited. Minecraft. Minecraft's amazing, dude. It is pretty vibe. By the way, uh, if those of you who don't know who, who missed like the first stream, um, I like how I just ate a fry before I start talking. What's wrong with me? It's okay. Uh, one second. I gotta eat this fry. Dang it. Okay. Um, if, if you do have difficult a difficulty um, starting a project, I recommend playing Minecraft because you get past that. That feel it helps you learn to get past that feeling of over planning, because in Minecraft you don't want to over you don't want to over plan. You just want to build, you just want to go for it, and your house just comes together at some point. Um, and I didn't play Minecraft as a kid. I didn't play Minecraft until probably like until like last year. That's when I started playing Minecraft, and now I can't stop playing it because it's such a creative outlet for me to be able to build without stressing, and to be able to apply that to different parts of my life just to like start running errands or start planning out a weekly schedule it does help that artist brain uh because it does it does limit the overthinking so if you i do recommend using that as sort of a a tool 
um, if you ever get the chance, because um, it really uh, it really helps, guys. It really does. I feel that. You know, RJ and I are going to start playing Minecraft together. We just haven't set up a server. Yeah, I know, yet. we have to. Sit so down. And then when we do, we have to invite Dr. Nick. I'm done for that. Okay. Those hind legs. I probably should have. I probably could have incorporated like their. Actually, I'm just thinking they just need to probably a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, another one thing that I'll do is I tend to over get paranoid of like what's the proper way to be able to z brush, and I had to remind myself. I guess it's not really a right way because I will dine and mesh like something from ten thousand times in order to work until I finally have a confident idea of where it's like. It's starting to look where I want it to get to. Like I'll, I'll sculpt something, they'll dynamesh. Sculpt something, they'll di dynamesh. And just because I, I want like, it's it's like for me, it's the same thing as um, wetting clay. Like if you're sculpting with clay and you're wetting it, you're adding and you're smoothing out like surfaces. It's sort of the same uh, concept for me. Gotcha. So what I'm doing right now is I put an overlay layer. I'm just kind of going in and. Going in with the eraser now and drawing with the eraser. Breaking up the silhouette. There's a little bit of this like zigzag that I like. The striping. It's like this. You know, and a lot of this is also just paying attention to the work itself. You know, sometimes I get a little carried away and, you know, again, this is like an easy piece, so there's not really a lot of, like, life or death here, but, you know, when you're working more professionally, it's good to go always with a fine tooth comb and kind of check out, you know, what needs to be fixed, what you may have missed, which, you you know, consistency is a, is a you have to learn to be consistent, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, self, that also comes with a lot of self-discipline, too. Yeah, exactly. It takes time.
Now, one more thing that I like to do is to kind of add a nice little fill, um, uh, gradient over things to kind of harmonize the colors a little more. Mm -hmm. So this is what I have so far. You know, there's little things I can, I can fix here and there. Mm -hmm. This is coming along amazing. Oh, I love those feet. That sounds a weird sentence, but a. Uh, in the context of the drawing. We do. <laughs> but, uh, in we've, we, we've talked about this before, everybody, but RJ, okay, so a particular awesome thing about creature design is RJ and I like uh, 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 the feet of a creature because it defines, like, almost the predatory uh, aspect of them. Like, are they fast? Or what was the environment? What do they hunt? You know, you can get all of that from a predator. I mean, from from the feet of a predator, obviously by um, by just their looking at their footprints. So there's something really fun and unique about uh, the feet of a predator. But not, but not just that. I so cool. I'd also expand as like you know it's funny like we, we lob like that's really like an anatomical part is like really looking really good. But it's like the funny thing when people don't understand what you mean. It's like oh man, that's a really good like uh, head shape or like that's a really <laughs> good like chest, you know. And that's the yeah. thing, though. It's just like it's cool, but like, you know, I appreciate the anatomy of like what you're working on. It's fun. It's so much fun. There's just there's just so much fun stuff. The slight till on the claws, on uh, mine or Justin's. Either way, you know, I agree because Justin's the claw tilt is really cool. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm a really big fan of uh, claw tilts. Uh, I do like them because um, I've seen them on my dog <laughs> sometimes. When the snails get too long, but the one big thing is, um, if you look at the uh, the Cathoga sculpt from the uh, 1997 movie Relic, uh, the claws were so huge that they were just kind of tilting. They were uh, along the ground, and I thought it was such an interesting aspect to emphasize the weight of the animal. Uh, I think it's a really, really cool detail. I really, I just, I really do like it. Nice. And I tend to. Um, I don't know if I've done that on any other. I think I mean, I know I've done it like on other um, animals, but it's just a really fun aspect. It, I think what it does is it helps create things a little bit more monstrous. Creates it a little creepy. Or a little more beastly. More a little more beast. Yeah. Um. I 
trying to think of what other, what else. Um, what other animals look like that. This looks cool. That's looking good. Thank you. How's mine? What do you think of mine? I love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's this. This is what's kind of super exciting for both of us. Everybody out there is um. Arch and I is we do we do way two different types of art styles, and I think that it's it's probably the most coolest thing because you get to see two different types of visions in two different mediums. I have the one thing that I one of my favorite things from RJ is animals, and you can see this in a lot of his pterosaurs too. Is he does a really good job at making things look um, sort of, I guess, uh, aerodynamic. There's a lot. There's a lot of streamlined body features that can that help depict that his animals are they're fast. There's no drag to them. They're quick. They can come after you in like 10 seconds, and it's just a really, really cool aspect. You can definitely check uh, check out his art on his Instagram. Uh, please do follow, go follow him if you haven't followed him already. Um, but there's a lot of really, really cool. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things that he does about his um, his art that is uh, it's really inspiring. So definitely check it out when you all get the chance. Please do. Thank you, and same to Justin. I really like how all your characters have a sense of, you know, again, it's 3D modeling, but believable weight and feel, and also a very aesthetically pleasing. Everything is made with such intention. <laughs> Let's get these back toes on here. I need to get, I'm trying to get like all, uh, I'm not gonna panic. If I go over a little bit at eight o'clock, that's fine. It's okay, it's okay. All right, I think I got this guy in a nice position. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna add some of the. We always go past. We say we're gonna stop at eight. We do end up going a little bit past. Oh, is our first stream at like our first like stream? We went to like nine o'clock. I think this is true. But we're trying, we don't want to do that tonight because that's really really late night, especially if you're watching us from a a different um time zone. But uh, <laughs> be prepared that we do. We, we do have a lot of fun and we just kind of go, we end up just still going for it. We have fun. We really do. It's a jolly good time here, everybody. Jolly good time. Jolly good show. Okay. So I'm gonna, I got this right here. Let me add my little layer. Of So I would say this this guy is more blue dominant. Like I get more of a blue gray. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna add my gradients. Nope. There we go. Like that, and then have the darker come up here. There. So I'm just adding a fill gradient to kind of add, you know, some. I'm going to harmonize the colors real quick. So I'm just adding that, and then I'm going to do this. No, that's wrong. Wrong layer. There we go. This layer. There we go. I'm doing the light show that Justin likes to see. Yes. The psychedelic hues. Embrace it. Embrace it, Dr. Nick. Super fun. Okay. Select. Oh, dang it, I didn't put a freaking duke on the back here. Okay, okay I'll just knock it down right. to like maybe sixty five. There we go. Now I'm just going to go in and erase places of interest. Mm -hmm. I was telling RJ what usually blows my mind is when people do 3D modeling work and they're doing things and like they'll have like as many act like it'll so active points is basically like almost like how many polygons that you have because everything is basically made up of. Um, Polygons, it's a mesh, you know? This is obviously still dye mesh, there's a lot of triangles in there. But people will be at like 75 million polygons, and it blows, it just blows my mind because if my, if my Mac tried to do that, um, it would obviously burst into flames, and then there'd be no more figures that would it'd, die in the it'd, fire. It'd be super dead. But like, yes, but it's, man, some people, 
sculpted in like these high poly counts and it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm currently trying to get myself a computer so that I can um, I can be able to produce work like that, like on that level. But it's just the coolest thing. People will make the coolest things out there. I absolutely oh, here for it. Real quick, I'm about to do some colored line art. So I'm gonna add some oh, okay. uh, fill to that. So pretty much I just made a, sec a duplicate layer of my line art and I'm just gonna go in and kind of add a fill on top of that. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the gradient, except I'm gonna add a different one. So I'm gonna go more purple. And as trippy as that looks, I'm gonna go back in and just kind of do the same thing I did. modeling on a Mac, so you can only imagine how much of a struggle it is for me to be able to play Minecraft. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. it. I, I actually, I, majority of the time, I have to play Minecraft on like relaxing because I can't, I can't, I can't get anything. Like it's hard for me to be able to aim at everything, and then uh, I'll have like a panic attack, uh, and then a skeleton will kill me. Okay, there we go. Knock that down to fifty. And then before I call this like kind of done, I'm just going to do this, where I'm just going to add some little last minute highlights to things. Right. Again, this is like a rough coloring kind of color sketch that I like to do. If I was going to do more refined work, there'd be like a whole like extra steps and process that I'd like would do on top of this. But it's good to just kind of have things for fun, you know? Yeah, we're just we're really just having fun here. Exactly. We're challenging ourselves. You could, I think you, I think probably if you guys have, some of you have been here since the beginning, you could already probably see differences in like our work already since the beginning of the streams, like uh, either our our line art or um, or even just workflow. You know, some of us were we're definitely doing more than we did uh, on our on our first stream, definitely. I know we were just we we babies. We still are. We're like learning, but hey. Yes. That's what it's about. Okay, it's about learning, but having fun with it. Okay, I think I got this gent kind of ready, and then I'm just gonna do some just like some little cool poses. The first last thing I'm gonna do before I call this finish finished is I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna select everything here and make a copy and merge that. So I have one individual now. Okay. And then I'm gonna do my my warp just to kind of play with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like to warp. Which means I just like to kind of go over one last thing and kind of play with the shape once everything's kind of there, you know, because it might be something I, I, I want, you know, maybe the head needs to be a little longer, maybe the body needs to be changed, maybe the tail needs to be changed, you know. I'm going to start adding the fins on this thing now. <laughs> so I haven't added them because I, I want to paint, I want to get to where you're at, I want to paint, it's just, it's so much fun. No, it definitely is. Maybe lower the body, you know, that's a thing that you always can play with. And it's again, it's nothing high stakes about this. You know, see, ah, see, maybe they're raising the hip, maybe more robust, maybe like that. Maybe feet position. You know, the feet's looking fine. And I can get more specific too, like I was doing the other day with my Specivo species, which I, which I was doing on this guy. This is kind of a bell sword I'm working on for a fictional island. You'll see more in my own live streams. You just reminded me I need to get the Discord. I've been running with the rules and stuff like that. So in case you guys didn't know, um, Arjun is setting up a Discord. It's just called Jurassic Core. Um, because uh, like we said before, the intention of these live streams is to basically create a, a sort of a safe art environment where you know we can kind of communicate and um, make friends, you know, especially and motiv be able to motivate each other in our careers and in our in our hobbies and everything. Um, and so we are currently we are uh, building a Discord, a uh, sort of a safe space that we can um, 
we can all come together and be able to participate in events like that, you know, in, 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 a, in a community like that. Uh, there, we'll be releasing more information on that when that comes out, but we just want you to be in the know. Nice. Also, and we really, we really do get fueled off of like the community because the community really has a lot to bring. It is a vibe. Also, Justin, I think I got him. I warped him a little bit. Got some pieces. Uh, just changed some of the uh, posture a little bit. Mm-hmm, okay. And I exaggerated one of the things. What do you think? And thank you, Doctor Nick. Much love to you too. I love it. It's kind of it's kind of giving me like tropical fish vibe, like you know marlin, you know. Is that kind of what it's supposed to? Is that kind of what it's I, supposed I, to? Was be? it supposed is to be? I, I don't know. Hey. Like it's like dog, and, like fish, and like raptor. Who knows? Whatever it is, it's I'm, great. I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. We really, we really are here for it. But it looks really fantastic. It yeah. really, really, really does. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start making some uh, gestures. Oh, this is the best. You guys are going to love this. This is so much fun. This is when he starts giving it like a little bit more like uh, like personality and action and dynamic. Yes, this is. Uh, oh, Nick says, I don't know if you have my new number, but message me and I'll give you my number. Honestly, it looks cool. Yes, it does. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, I love the head shape. That's so good. <laughs> Look, I need to use more stuff. I gotta finish the head. I gotta work on refining the head. Then I gotta put on the... Maybe maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go off the regular. Nah, I want the fins. And you know what I love in... Uh, if any of you know me... Uh, and you know, like, I, I love jowls. Jowl. Animals. I love jowls. Are, I love fleshy jowls. Jowls are good. on this guy. I think I want to have it. No, I think you got to keep his teeth. I'm, just, I'm not really feeling I'm not really feeling teeth. I just feel like like he's kind of like casually scoping out the scene. He looks very intelligent and, and kind of, you know. Yeah, look at that. Okay, this is so red. All right, let me get into the body. Little poses. Let me just expand my artboard. So this is like a little insight of what you know what you could be doing if you were working on a project. For example, if this was going to be for animation, there would be like a lot more refinement. That would go down, but also like it's good. So you think of it like this. One thing I like to challenge myself, especially with creatures, it's very easy. And even with characters, it's very easy to get into the. And it's nothing wrong. I'm just saying, if you're a new artist, it's completely fine. But if you want to start challenging yourself, it's good to start thinking about your characters in more dynamic action, not just kind of on the side pose right here, you know. But along the lines of like what would they be doing in motion so like for me I always like to think of it like this like getting them into interesting new kind of like behaviors and positions where I can kind of rough out things so like what if the character is like standing on something maybe like a you know, just kind of rough in a block or something I can have it doing this you know, the shoulder girdles right here. There. Another thing to also be aware of is draw through your object. So you can even draw grids to kind of keep things on a perspective line. And that, that's, you know, it takes more time to kind of get comfortable with them. But once you do, they really are helpful. For example, even if I was going to do it like this, it needs to be a little more accurate to what would that be.
So what I'm just trying to do is I'm trying to put the character in a context and, you know, just roughing in an environment. It doesn't have to be anything right and serious right now. I just want to have a sense of, like, how is this thing thinking about itself in its environment? How is it moving with its body? How is it living in the world? How is it figuring out where it belongs in the food chain? That's just that. Yeah, exactly. Right now, you're just doing a little stand on a box. Dang fins in there real quick, and I'll start painting this bad. Yes, because I am absolutely ready to start painting. And that shouldn't take me long. I mean, I think it's just a quick. Yep. And you can also adjust. I think the torso was a little long, so I'm gonna cut cut it down by half. That means the box would come down too. And all this is okay. You know, we're just keeping it loose and having fun. What I also like to do is I like to. How does the Grinch say it? Or keeping it loosey goosey. Exactly. Now, I like to keep my eraser kind of on like um, pressure for opacity and on pressure. So. When I erase, it's very light, and it doesn't. It saves me having to go back and forth to like select colors because I don't have to. I just have to erase, and it just changes the opacity based on the pressure I'm using. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna refer back to my image. Again, these are like rough little drawings that are meant to be for fun to just kind of give a flavor, you know? Yes. I was going to add these fins in here. I think I'm gonna make them more. I know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to put the quills in them. I'm going to make them more like a, like the Spinosaurus sail. Ooh. Um, you didn't really see much, you didn't see spines in them. You saw like, you saw, you know, like a, like a beefy sail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. Here, so that means this would be going down. Okay, cool. Well, like I, another thing I like to do, me and Justin talk about doing a lot, is we like to make also guidelines through the figure itself, mm -hmm. like where, where things would potentially go. Reaching the stage where it's just intense drawing. <laughs> or intense. I know we're just like we're, we're just really into it now. Like this is this is that that really that sense of focus. I know. Sorry, folks. If we're not as chatty right now, we're just like getting really in the groove of things. So that's usually happens. We're just like we're just excited. We're just feeling it. I'm really feeling it. 
and that's kind of, that was actually that's actually the point of this. The point of the streams is so that it gets you to be able to start a project and get and to be able to purposefully get you into that um, that art that creative zone. Yes. So that's how that's how you know that's how you create. It's hard to be able to create things when you're not in that zone. And that this is part of us mentally being able to train ourselves and self discipline to be able to get into the habit of just going for it, creating it, and getting ourselves into the zone, so that um, we can increase our workflow. And it just helps us later on in life, uh, professionally and in um. And in daily tasks of just being, of just doing things, of just yes. getting it done, you know. So I have him like doing this interesting pose where he's like kind of leaning, standing on like a block to look for something. Because uh -huh. I wanted it surveying, you know, the environment in like an interesting way. That's actually really interesting. Do you see it? Yes, I do. He's like he he's he's looking. He's like like he's just he's looking for something, or he's just kind of chilling and checking it out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I'm gonna add those. Oh, he's got some. He's got some on these. It's like he's got fins on his. Own. Okay. Let's more on his tail. Give me the cylinder. Okay, thank you. The interesting thing about doing this is usually when we it's just figuring out the primary primitive like the primitive shapes of your sculpts, which is huge. A lot of people we like to emphasize primitive shapes. And you learn those a lot in like a lot of entry level drawing courses or even just on YouTube. And that's basically breaking things down to like cylinders, squares and spheres. Like you're just kind of you know, you're you're getting the primitives. Exactly. And that's re that's really necessary for any type for either like your sculpting, drawing, um, they're necessary because otherwise your work will start to get chunky <laughs> in areas that it's not supposed to. So we do recommend definitely practice your primitives. It's the simple it's literally the simplest way to start off practicing. To start seeing everything as like tubes and squares and cube tubes, cubes and squares and spheres. It's just it's fun stuff. It's really exciting. But uh don't be afraid to experiment with your primitives. Yes. Okay, there's one, I got one pose. And for these ones, I don't have to get precious with them since they're just kind of sketches. If I was going to go back in, then I would actually start cleaning up a net. Oh, that looks so good. I just saw what you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, 
uh, think about the other pose. Like I said, I like to challenge myself a little bit and try to do something interesting, so mm -hmm. let me see what I can do. Oh, you know, I'm gonna do like a top, I'm gonna do like a top down view. I haven't done that one. I'm really trying to challenge myself now, Justin. Ooh, trying to imagine. I know. Again. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, dude. I'm just, I'm just going for it. Like, this, it's the learning experience. I know. And then it comes back to your, your primitives, like having a good sense of like those basic primitives. So you wouldn't see a lot of like detail, detail coming off of this kind of view but I just mostly wanted to try this to kind of get a sense of like what this would look like you know mm -hmm. and who would actually do that a lot that was like a big inspiration to me back in the early days we were talking about like early like deviant art like creature designers and we we're like thinking of like um was Rodrigo Vega was a big one for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, he did a lot of creature designs that were like from very interesting points of view. Actually, that's, that came out pretty good. I'm actually pretty impressed. This is a good session. This, this, is, this is pretty good. This is really good, actually. The key with poses like this is like not as much detail as you would think. <laughs> I think the one thing I don't like about ZRush is how many times I will accidentally redynamish something. Mm. I mean, I know I dynamish like crazy, but I'll. Because if you like hold control and you click your mouse, yeah, or uh, you drag like on your mouse, um, my computer. So I'm using my Mac keyboard, so it's kind of hard to be able to differentiate like the Option key from the Control key. Uh. And I'll accidentally just like I'll just, just redynamesh and like sometimes it'll go up to like this absurd number. I'll be afraid that my computer is gonna like crash. Or something. It's just gonna explode. Yeah. Sometimes I'll feel it. Like I'll be like I'll be like I can feel the heat radiating off the back of my computer. Cause I'll keep my water bottle back there. It feels like it's gonna um, take off. Yeah, because I, I, in case you guys don't know this, guys, I don't actually have a computer desk. Um, I have to make do because times are tough. Um, and I'm using, I'm literally, my computer's like perched up like on an IKEA shelf. Like it's just that's what that's what I'm working with right now. This looks. Okay. Let me do a couple. Of, Actually, I'm going to just. Maybe I'll just go there. Pro running down. The head crest would be like here. That means I'd see a little bit of like this way. Actually came out really. I'm actually really proud of how that's coming out right here. Dude, I love, I love it. I love your dude. Your, your the, the dy dynamic poses are just really coming. They're just really delivering. They're slaying. They're Thank giving you. us everything. Yes. Creature design slay. I'm really here for it. Okay, I have 
one more to do, and then I'll add like low color. Ooh, that looks so nice. I'm gonna start cut calling my guy in just a second. A couple of illustrations. Oh, I'm gonna do one of my favorite poses to do. What's your favorite poses? Uh, like, like I like doing this kind of like, kind of liminal, kind of like SCP, kind of like you caught me, teehee kind of look. Ooh, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's like where they just kind of stand there menacingly for no reason. Mhm. Mm but they look at you. Like, like you want to go, son? <laughs> like, a, like, a, oh, like an anteater, like the poses they do. Oh, when they're like, when they're like, when you're like National Geographic taking a picture of them, and they're just like, huh? Mhm. Mm Exactly, it's like, what? Okay, I think we're ready for a... Uh... Oh, wait, not yet. Almost. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, just double-checking. So, next time, folks, chat, we are going to be tackling the Comstegnathus. Yes, we are. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be really fun to do. I'm actually going to be... It's going to be really exciting. It's going to be a riot. Dude, it's going to be a riot. Okay. I'm going to start coloring. I think. Nice! Ready for coloring, because I am ready! I'm ready for coloring, I just, I just am. A couple more nice details. Okay, one of the colors, so what are you looking at? My paint. the eyes are they're like I think they're yellow are they yellow I, I go, are we going with yellow at least okay. I interpreted them as yellow I couldn't really make it out and I thought it was like with all that blue you need some contrast yeah I'm gonna go, I'll go with that too that's a good idea I'll just go with the, like a yellow the... a little too long and just
Well, I'll go with blue. Usually when things are gray, I don't go totally gray. I go like a blue. Yeah, that's what it went with too. I gotta get the material in. God, this looks kind of terrifying. I did a little wearing with his mouth open. Oh yeah? Hey, nice. Hey, yo. You see it? Yeah, I do. I actually see it. The one that's the forward facing one. Yeah. That's so cool. I'm gonna give it. A, I gotta work on its eyes just a little bit because um, if there's one thing anybody knows about me, is I like the. Uh, if you guys have ever seen the movie Ginger Snaps, the animatronic creature suit that they did for that thing was so phenomenal, and I love the uh, the slanted eyes that they gave. It's like a werewolf, isn't it? The werewolf. Oh, it's so. It's such a good. I love that movie because it's the, the effects on it are just amazing, and it makes it really seem like a suburban night. Yeah, I love the. Uh, I I really like I, I like um I like slanted eyes in my uh my animals. They're kind of like the like the reptilian kind of gay like like a like a like a snake. Well, it's not even like a snake, I guess to to say, but it's like a um when they're when you're folk when they're focused and you're squinting a little bit. Oh, like okay. they already have you in their sights. It's very it's There's just something about that I like. It's very like it's very like tiger like. Yeah. Okay. Like getting really fast at drawing like theropod feet. You, you just start to just start to just really not get it by memory at that point. Yeah, no. It's like this is such this is very helpful. Okay, I got that pose down. What do you think? It's got kind of this vaguely human kind of like silhouette. That is freaky. Do you know how scary that is? I was like, yeah, I'd be terrified if I saw that. Don't cry. That's an irrational fear. There we go. See, yeah, I see it. There we go. Alright, cool. Got my little poses, now I'm just gonna add some like rough, super rough color. Nothing too crazy, nothing too serious.
Sometimes if my lines are a little too light, I just merge them. I double them. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I like a double. Ah, oh, that's looking so good. That's looking so good. I love that. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to add my rough little colors and just, yeah, there we go. We call it, I, can call, I can call this one done. Overall gray. Again, this is like super chill and snow. These are just kind of flavor sketches that I call them, like just kind of get a sense of like, what is this guy doing? What's he thinking? How's he moving? <laughs> it just kind of breaks me away from like thinking of them only in a static pose, you know? Yeah. One thing when you draw a character and you're like having a static profile view, it's another thing when you wanna now you gotta you gotta really bring the character to life in the illustration. Especially if like you're doing animation or like you know any comic books or graphic, design. you gotta think of, also think of it like this. Like uh, speaking to one of my things, I have to work on. I like detailed work, but if you're gonna be doing uh, work where you're like you're gonna be drawing that character over and over again, be merciful to yourself and really think about like what could be simplified and what needs to be there. You know. Yeah. Because you're going to have to draw that character so much, you're going to get sick of it, I promise you. It's not like you don't like the characters, it's just like constantly drawing it's just them. the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. It eventually grates on you, so make it easy on yourself by just making them simple to draw from the beginning. And that simplicity doesn't mean like a sacrificing of detail, it just means knowing when and where to put it, what's important. Mm -hmm. And like when you're doing character turnaround sheets, uh, um, I, I used to do this, you know, which is a mistake on my end, and it's just because I was learning. You think you gotta do that as the first thing? No. When you're doing a character turnaround in two dimensions, at least, that is the final thing you should do. There's a sterilizing act. It is meant to kind of like you're consolidating the design. Like, don't lead with that. Like, while you're doing your design process, iterate, be loose, be silly, like I'm doing. And then, if you want to take it serious, then you start doing more refined things. You know? It's so like even yeah. this is as fun as this is. If I want to take this further and actually start breaking it down again, maybe do another block of sword with this kind of refined sketch. And kind of figure out where I want to take it next, you know? Did you see a block of sore? Yeah. I like that. Well, that's what I'm using for my turn. Like, you know, for creatures, a block of sword. Coin that term. It's a good term. <laughs> so, there's that. Now I'm just going to start doing some more color. I, I did. I went with yellow in mine because it was like, it was like such a contrast, you know. It, like I need something to contrast. This is mostly monotonous and gray, you know. Yeah. Like there's got to be a little more. And it's like you know what? I'm gonna take creative liberty. Oh, I 
you're gonna save it. You know, you're gonna yeah, trust I'm it. Yeah, well, the, the nails are the topology on the nails is all corrupted, so I gotta like. Oh no! No, no, it's not a bad thing. Don't worry about it. It's just a, just a good thing. Oops. Just one of those things. Just one of those things. It's just a little annoying, but it is what it is. I thought I changed the input to play in knows me the one thing I like to color on my animals some colors on the belly is the toe pads yes I love I always cover color the toe pads it's in all my figures the pads of the feet are always um there's always a little bit they're, they're always painted detail attention to detail to make some little bit extra spice yeah add some spice Okay, I think yep. I got him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, that looks so rad. It almost looks like that one. Uh, oh, you know what we also got to do when we eventually get to it is like the Night Stalker Raptor. Uh, is that one of the Chaos ones? I think the so. One? It's like the no, this is the black and like like pr like kaleidoscope colored one was like the red, the orange, yellow, blue stripes. But yeah, I no think, for sure. I think so. But yeah, I think I got my my scary gent good. Yes. Uh oh, what happened? I just popped the thing and I accidentally died. It's fine. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. All right, let me see if I can get a different color. Get the same uh, color, different material. Let's see, actually, maybe I have a different. 
I'll like look through and see if I have different different materials with this. Get these in. It kind of has like these neon blue and yellow colors, like right here at least. I was kind of in t interpreting it that way. At least what I wanted to go for was kind of like more, more contrast. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about Drew. Oh, you're asking about the the the, the Night Stalker rapper. I think it was. Let me see the. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's it's called the, oh, the Chaos Effect Raptor Alpha, that's what it's called, the Alpha Raptor. Ah, okay. And it's like blue and like black and neon and purple. If you do a raptor, I may just cheat and build it off of an already existing design tool type deal, like a... <laughs> Actually, there you go, that material looks good, makes it look more aquatic, looks a little bit... Which is interesting because it like I don't I don't you said you said in the the reference material that it is supposed to be aquatic right? Uh, no, it just said that it was supposed to be a mixture of a Deinonychus and a and a dire wolf. So how this thing came out like a, like how this thing came out like the thirteenth year looking fish guy? I have no idea. Oh, but um. Oh, real quick. It is what it is, I guess. Uh, Royal said, so "Gonna head out, y'all. Have a great night." These both look so. Oh, thank you, Royal. Have a great night. Thank you for stopping by. It was really cool have having you. Have a great you. night. This is so cool. He's so cool. He's super cool. But yeah. I think I'm calling mine right now. Yeah, I think I'm... I think it might be pretty good. Let's uh, adjust the lighting on real quick. Oh damn, I actually realized I do have to off at some point because I told my friend I was going to play Minecraft at 8 o'clock and it's so past 8. Oh no! Oh my god, it's, it's totally fine. He'll understand. I hope so. Dharma, if you're watching, I got off in a second. <laughs> okay, but um... He's, he's a very sleep boy. Oh, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. He is a, he's a, he's a slim gym. Oh, that's really ugly. That's not what I wanted to do. Nick linked us in the, um, in, in, oh, I'm gonna add this to my story. Oh, hey, okay, thank you, Darwin. 
<laughs> Welcome. So this is the person you're supposed to play Minecraft with. That's Dharma, yeah. That's my, that's my home skillet. Okay. Look at you, Justin. You colored it and got the whole figure in. A whole body? What the heck? Like, what is this? Who, who, who is me? I don't know me. All right. This looks pretty good. I'm actually, I'm actually, this is, I'm really satisfied. This is really good. good. Well, I think we can call it. Yeah, we can call it. Gosh, this is, this, what a, what a great session. It was, was a great session. This is good. Well, there you have it, folks. We both did our take on the Deinonychus from the Chaos Effect line. We're yeah, I'm really excited. Like I'm really happy with this how this guy came out. I'm really vibing with the kind of sleek basilisk lizard dog raptor that I'm going for. Um, and I love what you did. It's amazing. It looks so cool. Like I'm not gonna lie, I love could... what you did. Look at your work. It's absolutely fantastic. This is just great. This, this is, is so great good. Day. Well. Uh, we'll be doing another stream next Tuesday, same time, around 5 o'clock. Um, and I think we're going to be tackling the Comp Steg, Nathus, right? Yep, yes we are. Ooh, that's going to be cool. Super stoked, super stoked. All right, folks. Well, thank you for joining us. You know, make some great art, drink some water, take good care of yourself, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Be safe. Bye-bye. Thank you.